No pain and no gain. There's a title at stake now on BBC One as the quest begins to find the world's strongest man, 2002. For centuries, men have sailed the Malacca Straits off Malaysia, seeking to become the most powerful in Southeast Asia. But now, there's a whole new battle for supremacy. The Metrix Trophy for the world's strongest man will be contested this year in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. And these are the Petronas Towers, the tallest buildings on earth, 88 storeys high, 452 metres reaching into the sky. The ultimate symbol of Malaysia's surge to economic prosperity in Southeast Asia. In this city, right here, right now, size is everything. One of the annual highlights of the Malay sporting calendar is a race up the KL Tower. 421 metres from bottom to top, 1,850 steps, and the winner usually does it in around 10 minutes. But down amongst the urban sprawling mass of Kuala Lumpur are 30 men for whom strength and not speed is the key. From Austria to Australia they've come, from Hawaii to Iceland, in search of the biggest prize in strongman sport. As ever, five heats of six athletes, the top two in each to go through to the final, and let's now meet the first six contestants from heat one. Magnus Sommers, Sweden, 32 years old, two meters tall, 150 kilos. Derek Boyer from Australia, 33 years old, 192 centimetres tall, 140 kilos. My name is Grits, Denmark, 32 years, 199 centimetres, 142 kilos. Nigel Moss, South Africa, 34 years old, 1.91 metres, 123 kilos. Steve Curry, Pennsylvania, USA, 29 years old, 6 foot 2 inches tall, 143 kilos. Greg Edmonds, Scotland, 25 years of age, 194 centimeters tall, 120 kilos. kilos. This is Medeca Square and it was here 45 years ago that Malaysia ended its links with its colonial past and declared independence. And it's here that we start heat three with the carry and drag. Carry those two anvils, 120 kilograms each, that's 265 pounds. Halfway, put them down, drag this huge anchor, 265 kilograms, that's 660 pounds all the way to the end of the course. Now for Gregor Edmonds, it's his first World's Strongest Man as a competitor, but your dad's been running this event for years. So what sort of inside information have you got on what it takes to be a strong man? Well, as you say, I've seen a, a lot of it done over the, the past few years. And uh, as you say, this is now Worlds, not Britain's, so it's a lot harder. So I'm hoping I can do it as good as I did at the British. It's as good as I can do. Well, you were runner-up there. Realistically, what are your hopes here, do you think? Uh, realistically, uh, it's the world. It's my first one. Who knows what can happen? Well, I think breakfast is not quite settled, so nerves are going now. But whether it's the world's strongest or Scotland's strongest or even smaller competitions, the feeling's the same. You just get on with it and do your best. So it all starts here, describing the action as ever, Paul Dickinson. It's early in the morning here, but the temperature's zooming up towards the 40s. 
And the first competitor, probably of Fiji, now representing Australia, Derek Boyer, unbeaten for four years in his native Australia. The newcomer now, Nigel Moss from South Africa, the giant policeman from Pretoria. Good moment for him as well. And Gregor Edmonds, his father, standing behind. Dougie Edmonds, the referee. But Gregor Edmonds representing Scotland. Now the giant Magnus Samuelson, the former champion, but nursing a big, big tear in his bicep. But psyched up as always, going to be tough to beat. René Minkfist, a former finalist in World's Strongest Man, representing Denmark. And finally, another newcomer from the United States, the US champion this year, Steve Kirrett. He didn't win an event in the US championships, but he was so, so consistent. Well, I just wonder how they're gonna get on. These giant anvils, almost the equivalent of a small motorcycle carried in each arm halfway down the course. So here we go, the very first event in this year's World's Strongest Man, and Samuelson is off to a flyer. What a start for the giant Swede. Now looking for Gregor Edmonds, he's struggling just a little bit at the moment, coming through into about fourth place, next to Samuelson, and it's Samuelson who's away. Almost down and out there, the Swede, and coming up fast is René Minkvist, slow and steady. For Gregor Edmonds on this side, Steve Kerrett, the newcomer from the United States, being overtaken by Minkfitz, and on the far side, Boyer's going well. But Samuelson, all eyes on the former champion. He's got a couple of metres to go. That anchor has to cross the line. The anchor and chain weighing a massive 285 kilos, and Samuelson wins the opening event. There's a 75 second time limit on this. The clock ticking away. Samuelson just walks away. So dominant in this opening event. Can Edmonds come through? On this side, Minkfitz. On the far side, Boyer. That's the American Kirit. Still big points to be won and lost. And there's the whistle. I think Gregor Edmonds in about third or fourth place. But no doubt about the winner, Samuelson, who's absolutely down and out. Phenomenal performance, but the heat taking its toll, not just on Edmonds, but on everybody else. René Minkfist absolutely flat out, finding it difficult to even stand. I think he finished in second place. What a start to this year's competition. No doubt about the winner, but what about the rest? How you doing? Uh, I think I would just... How hard was that? That was a big shock for the system. <laughs> Always is, first event, you don't, you don't realise how heavy things are until suddenly you've got to do it. <laughs> but Thurs, happy with that? Uh, well, I got fourth in the British, so that should be good, eh? I'm happy. It was one of my weaker events, so those can't be bad. So I could really feel it now. My legs were totally gone. Couldn't breathe, so I was just looking. I know Magnus was was winning, but I was looking for second place. Oh, I'm happy. That's the worst one. Oh. Well, boy, was it hard. Magnus may have won it, but he wasn't too forthcoming in the immediate aftermath. Here's confirmation that it was six points for the Swede, Minkbit second, and a good start for Gregor Edmonds. It took 10 minutes or so for Samuelson to come up with his post-race thoughts. It surprised me that the drag was so so difficult and so hard, but uh, end of day I won it, so I'm pleased. And you know, you're like a fixture in this competition. Every year, <laughs> here you are, year on year on year. How, how would you assess your form this year compared to last? Because you've had a lot of injuries, haven't you? Yeah, I've been lucky. Through my career, I always stayed in one piece. Uh, five months ago, I pulled my bicep off uh, and had to reattach it. And everybody said I was over and out for, for, for a long time. So I just have to prove them wrong. So for the first time, I haven't really thought as much about how, the, how this contest will do. I'm just, I'm just here to prove everybody that I'm, I'm not dead yet. And I think this will get them the message.
44 degrees and rising, close your eyes, you could almost be in Scotland. And this next event will be more at home in Kokodi or Kilmarnock than it would in Kuala Lumpur because it's taken straight out of the Highland Games, making its debut in World's Strongest Man, the weight throw. Now, Gregor, you've been brought up with this kind of event, so tell us, what's the secret to this? It's going from the, the biggest muscles, which is in your, your bottom and legs, and you pull with them. The weight comes up, up, up. You pull like a power clean, but you keep pulling, you keep pulling until it's fingertips, smallest muscles, the fast ones, you let it go. Well, this should be a demonstration at the opening height for Gregor Edmonds. Certainly, in terms of experience, he could do very, very well here. 4 metres 10, just a shade over 13 feet. And if you can imagine going on holiday with a 25 kilogram suitcase, that's the weight that goes over. And that was a superb demonstration. Good start by the Scot. Terrific technique. Now this was the opening height, and clearly they don't do this sort of thing too often in Fiji or Australia. Because for Derek Foyer, a real veteran of World's Strongest Man for many years, it was a height too far. Maybe they don't do it too often on the high felt either. At four meters 50, it was the end for the South African. I see the guys who have done it before. They know the technique. There's a secret to everything we do. And they know the secret I don't, but I'll find it out some other time. <laughs> and I'll come back and give them a hiding. Magnus Samuelson may have won the first event and he was optimistic about this one until at four meters 70, it was the end for the Swede. Gregor Edmonds, perhaps surprisingly, got to 4 meters 80 and then called it quits. But on dark nights in Pennsylvania, they love nothing more than throwing huge weights over bars. Steve Kirrett, tremendously impressive there, and Rene Minkwitz at 4 meters 90, just too easy for him. So the main points in event two, still up for grabs. So just two competitors left now. This is Kirrett of the United States of America, 16 feet four. You'll understand that better than five metres. Well, this is a big height for both men left in, and that's a first failure for the American. Two attempts allowed. He's got to go straight back in. Now then, a long, steady swing. Then the giant lift by the legs and the back, and finally by the arms and shoulders. Oh, that's even worse. So now he has to wait for René Minkfist, the only competitor left in who can take maximum points. So here is Minkwitz of Denmark, the former finalist. Nobody has managed to negotiate this height of five metres. It's a prodigious height, 25 kilograms the weight. It looks small, but believe me, it's heavy. But that is good, he's done it. Maximum points for Denmark. And another third place for Gregor Edmonds, although I think Gregor will be a little bit disappointed with his height. He's done better than that. But look at this, the victory dance now, and maximum points for Minkwitz. So a good win for the Great Dane, the American in second. Gregor Edmonds third place once again, but for Derek Boyer, no points at all. He failed to clear a single height, and he and Nigel Moss finding themselves tailed off a bit. With four in contention, though, this could be a very interesting heat. of one of Kuala Lumpur's busiest streets beating a little bit slower at the moment because they've closed the main road to allow the Fingal's Fingers to take place. Five huge rods of iron weighing between 200 and 300 kilograms to be lifted up and pushed over as quickly as possible. Now this looks different this year from previous times because the two guys are going to go alongside each other. So it's a race from start to finish. There's the new course layout at Bin Tang Walk in downtown KL. And there is Rennie Minkfitz alongside Steve Kirrett of the United States of America. So let's have a look at the technique. Up to the chest and then straight arms, a straight body. And you've got to try and keep the legs straight as well as Minkfitz just goes into the lead. Of course, as fatigue sets in, the technique is going to falter, that's for sure. Two over each and going well, but it's still Minkfitz just in the lead by about half a second on that last one and with number three 
This next one, 275 kilos, that's over 500 pounds. So here we go, it's neck and neck all the way, but both men struggling just a wee bit. We've seen plenty of competitors in the past go five and complete the course, but not this time. And I think these two guys will be disappointed. But both got their three fingers up in under 30 seconds, which was more than Derek Boyer could manage. And Nigel Moss of South Africa was even slower with his three. Well, what a head-to-head -head now for Gregor Edmonds, up against the Get former ready. champion. And when Magnus Samuelsson hasn't won a final, he's always been so, so close. He's one of the most experienced competitors in the world. But the Scot has gone into the lead. What a good start by Gregor. Well, it's often said that in this event, if you're tall, it's an advantage. Samuelsson a shade taller than Greg Redmonds, who's over six feet four inches. And now Samuelsson's coming back. They've both done three. They're certainly faster than either Kerrit or Mingfist. This is a fantastic head-to-head, -head, but the Scott just blowing and puffing at the moment. Can he do five? Samuelson looks as though he could be heading for victory once again. And Samuelson has done it. It looks so easy, but what a performance by Gregor Edmonds as well. He's going to pick up a second place. Tremendous points. But you were determined not to get beaten by him, weren't you? Once I get, once I get going, and, and I felt that I had no problem with it, I gave it my all, and luckily I catched him in the end, but... Gregor is very good on this, so I'm, I'm pleased with my performance. And are you pleased with yours? Of course. To be neck and neck and actually in front at one stage of this man's quite something, injury or not. I'm happy with that, of course I am. So Samuelson with the aid of a cold sponge at the end, looking like the champion he once was, and Gregor Edmund showing why he is Scotland's strongest man. And Gregor now just two points behind the joint leaders. Now, contrary to what you might think, this is not just all about brawn. There's some brain in there too. There's a lot of talking and talking each other down, hyping each other up. You know, it's there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of mind games going as well, but I think I'm quite good at them. The presidential palace in Putrajaya, the centerpiece of what will be the most modern city in the world when it's completed in 2010, housing 350,000 people. The international airport's over there, the Formula One racetrack over there, but eat your heart out Schumacher and Barrichello. Anybody can drive a car up a hill, but how many people do you know who can pull one up one? Well, Derek Boyer could. He got to the end of the course in 28.01 seconds, but it was too much for Nigel Moss, who only made it as far as 22.55 metres. What a performance it's been so far by Gregor. He's in third place behind Magnus Samuelsson and René Minkwitz. But he's up against Steve Kirrett in this heat. Get well, 1,500 kilograms, the car weighs. It looks pretty easy when they get started, but then it gets so, so hard after about 10 metres when they have to start going uphill. And this is a real sprint by Gregor. Now the slope kicks in. You've got to stay low. You've got to keep pulling with the arms, driving with the legs. And the American is gaining on the Scott just a little bit. Can he keep it going? Can he keep the time going? Yes, he can. That is a good time by Gregor Edmonds, 22.8 seconds, and Steve Currett stops at 26.5. Well done to both of them. Well, you've put the pressure on, haven't you? I hope so. I hope that's good enough. Last 10 metres, how hard was that? It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm used to pulling trucks, and I'm used to pushing my father's trucks at the, his old dairy, because they weren't the best fleet of trucks, so I find it quite easy. Well, I wonder how Get these ready. two guys will find it. Magnus Samuelsson on this side nearest the camera. That's Minkfitz and Samuelsson and Minkfitz locked together on 15 points. And look at this, they're sprinting away. Now the cars start to go uphill, but this is still fantastic stuff. The giant arms of Samuelsson 
but can he beat the Dane? It's going to be so, so close. Right at the finish, Minkfitz just gets it. Oh, that was fantastic. And they're both under 20 seconds, and that means Edmonds finishes third. That was very important for you, because Gregor was getting a little bit close, wasn't he? Uh, too close. But now I think I have four points or something. It's, it's nice. A contented smile for the Dane, a second victory for him. Samuelson in second place, Edmonds in third. And what that means is the three of them are pulling clear of the rest. Gregor is snapping at the Swedes' heels. Here's the old stager to sum up the state of play with two events to go. Three points is a lot of points if, if everything goes well. But then again, if you do a bad mistake, three points is nothing. The British motorcycle legend Carl Fogarty launches his Patronus team this year, so fittingly, beneath the Patronus towers in a country obsessed by motorsport, two motorbikes could well determine who gets to the final of this year's World's Strongest Man. It's the Basque Circle. The bikes weigh 300 kilograms, that's 660 pounds, and they have to be carried on the forearms as often as possible around this circle. And for Gregor Edmonds, this really is a must-win event, isn't it? Yep. If I stand any chance of the final, I've got to win this one. So, all guns blazing. I need to do it now. Well, even in the stifling heat, all the contestants managed to take those bikes a pretty reasonable distance. First of all, Boyer, then Moss, and Steve Kirrett. Look at the pain on his face. The best to date, 83.9 metres. Well, they do say one of the things that's required to get through to the final is consistency. And when you look at Gregor's performances so far, three third places and a second, he's still there, but he could do with the victory. So six feet, four and a half, knocking on the door of 20 stones in body weight. It's his father, Dougie Edmonds, who says, get ready and lift, and away we go. 30 metres around, and it's a great target that's been set by the American Steve Kirrett. There's two mopeds weighing in at 300 kilograms. 30 meters gone. Good speed. It's to be steady, not fast. That's the secret. Jamie Reeves standing in the background there, former world's strongest man, keeping a watchful eye on Gregor Edmonds, who's trained so, so hard as he goes past the 60 meter mark. And this is coming up towards the lead. The Scot has done it. He's in the lead now. 90 metres gone. He's got to put as much distance between himself and that mark as possible. We've still got Samuelson and Minkvitz to go. This is fantastic. Over 100 metres. Brilliant stuff by Gregor Edmonds. 110 metres, but he's got to wait now. And what a crucial wait it might be. Samuelson's very good at this. So I hope that's rubbed him up the wrong way. I hope it does something to his confidence. Well, it certainly might, having position. seen that performance by Gregor Edmonds. But Are what about ready? this bicep tear that Magnus Samuelson Whoops. reportedly had four months ago? How will that affect his performance here? The Swedish newspapers almost wrote off his chances before he even got here. So he's determined to show them he's still in shape and he's still one of the best. Looking a little bit unsteady as Samuelson, but it's good speed, a little bit faster than Edmonds. But speed is not important. He's got that plastic strip across his nose. It's supposed to help the breathing. And he's coming up towards three revolutions now, so still looking pretty good. Oh, he's struggling a bit at the moment. He's down. So he's in second place, just ahead of Steve Kirrett. But Edmund still a long, long way in the lead. One competitor to go. I'm safe today forget if I can get one third and one second place. And this is very dangerous for my bicep. So I can fight on maybe for another lap or so, but then I have to do all this stuff. And then you over-rotate the bicep and make the risk for injury sky high at this day, so another time, another place, and I will show them. All eyes now on the Dane, but can he be the great Dane, Rene Minkvitz? The only guy who can separate Greg Redmonds from this Are maximum points in the penultimate event. Lift 
And go! Lift and go, says referee Dougie Edmonds. I wonder if secretly he's hoping Minkfitz will not be able to go three and a bit times round. He's looking good for 30 metres, though. That's no problem at all. 30 metres gone, one revolution. Needs two and a half more to go into the lead. Greg Redmond's pacing around in the background, watching this intently, but Minkfitz, I think, is he beginning to struggle? There's certainly stress in those eyes, and in the face, he's slowing dramatically. Surely this is victory for Scotland. Oh, this is dramatic. Minkfitz is going to finish in last place. I can't believe it. Victory for Scotland, a dramatic turnaround in form in this second to last event. Greg Redman said he had to win that and he did just that, emphatically too, 25 metres clear of the rest. But Minkfitz coming last means suddenly Edmonds is in with a great chance of making it to the final. Minkfitz from appearing home and dry, now under pressure. But no excuse, he was the best and he won, that's okay. But we still have one more, one more event to go. So. Maybe if I'm lucky. How do you view the stones now against Gregor? I don't know how he is, but sometimes I'm really good, sometimes I'm not so good. So I hope I'm really good today. Can you get five up? I will do everything. It's win or die. Win or die in the mother, or should that be the daddy of all strongman events? The five stones to be placed on the wall. The last one, 160 kilograms, will be crucial. You'd expect nothing less of Magnus Samuelsson, a former world's strongest man. He got all five stones up onto the wall in a time just over 30 seconds. A real show of strength. He's into the final, but the big question, who join him there? Well, the arithmetic is very simple here. Greg Redmond's on the left. If he beats René Minkfitz, the Scot is through to the final. It's as simple as that. I tell you what, the atmosphere here is unbelievable. Minkfitz has got a chance. Edmonds, in his first ever World's Strongest Man competition, has got a chance. But which one has got the bottle? Which one has got the technique? Gregor, a shade behind, but gets it up first. This is good for the Scot. Minkfitz, not as tall as Edmonds. That could be a disadvantage, but such tremendous power. But it's still Edmonds in the lead. He's got it on his shoulder and just has to plonk it on top of that wall. Minkfitz carrying it on his chest. Come on, number four for Scotland. Yes! Edmonds surely on his way to the final. If he can do number five ahead of Minkfist, he's got it. Minkfist is miles behind. And Gregor Edmonds is in the final at his very first attempt. Absolutely superb. Minkfist knows he's beaten. It's Gregor Edmonds for Britain and Scotland in the final. First time in it and into the final. What does that mean to you, generally? Well, it's not settled in yet, but... Uh... <laughs> It's great. I can say now, I'm in the top ten in the world. That's something to be able to say that. I did my best, but I was beaten by a better man. So. A truly immense performance by Gregor Edmonds. Second place there means that he and Magnus Samuelsson, a former champion, will go through to the final of the Metrex Trophy to find the world's strongest man. Greg, many congratulations on getting to the final and given your family's history in this event, you must be immensely proud. I tell you what though, as a Scot you'll appreciate this, down in Chinatown, the most amazing bargains. I picked up three Rolexes for ten quid each, but I'll let you have them for eight. For your sake, John, I hope they're waterproof. Now you can get eight BBC channels, including world cinema and exclusive drama. You can already get these new BBC.
And so the world's strongest man circus moves to Malaysia. One of the enduring images of Southeast Asia is mile upon mile of palm tree and paddy field. Malaysia used to be self-sufficient in rice. Now they have to import 30% of their total national consumption. But in the same way that you'll always find there's an awful lot of coffee in Brazil, there's still a heck of a lot of rice in Malaysia. And much of it finds its way here to Chinatown in Kuala Lumpur, a frantic, kaleidoscopic, helter-skelter mixture of restaurants and shops in the heart of the oldest part of the capital. And Kuala Lumpur is very much a symbol of the new Malaysia, with its avowed aim of a place amongst the world's elite. Proud, strong, unstoppable. As ever in the Metrex Trophy, there are five heats, six strong men in each, six events in each. The top two go through to the final. Already there, a Swede and a Scot, Gregor Edmonds. Let's meet the next six would-be finalists. Brian Skinwell from Indiana, USA, age 28, height 6 foot 3, weight 153 and a half kilos. Heinz Ole from Germany, age 35, height 192, weight 152 kilos. Raimond Bergmanis from Latvia, age 36, height 1 meters 92, 139 kilos. Joalak from Finland, age 28, height 1 meter 98, 132 kilos. I'm Jano Harms from the Netherlands. 8.27, height 1 meter 89, 135 kilos. I'm Mark Coyley from Northampton, England. Age 30, height 6 foot, weight 114 kilos. Now last year in Zambia, you were one of the British competitors. You come here as Britain's strongest man. Does that weigh heavily on your shoulders? Well, it does. Last year, I sort of got in by the, through the back door, um, finishing sixth in the Britons. And this year, a lot of the experience I had from um, World Strong Time last year helped me in good stead for the Britons, and obviously, you know, helped me to win it. And coming here this year, just I think it just makes you feel more confident, really, coming with the title. <laughs> We start in Madeka Square, the heart of colonial Kuala Lumpur, where Malaysia declared independence 45 years ago. And the history of strongman events tells you that a good start is essential. And make no mistake, it's a real toughie to start with. Picking up these two giant anvils, 120 kilograms each, that's 265 pounds, and going just about this speed, actually, halfway down the course before putting them down here and then being confronted by this huge tire to flip. Now, this weighs 400 kilograms, Wait for it, that is 880 pounds. Oh! Over now to Paul Dickinson. Well, John's gone to have a little lie down after that. It's unbelievably hot and humid here for this competition. So difficult for all the competitors, including Heinz Olesch. 35 years old, weighing in at a massive 152 kilograms. Mark Arliff, Britain's strongest man from Wellingborough in Northamptonshire. One of the lightest men here. I wonder if that's going to be a disadvantage. Jarno Hams from the Netherlands. He came into this competition for the seven-time champion, Beren Vennenberg. Looking quiet. I wonder if he's confident. The Latvian Olympic weightlifting champion, Raymond Bergmanis, at 36, the oldest man in this heat. The giant Juha Rasanen from Finland, nearly six feet six inches tall. Very, very athletic indeed. And finally, from the United States of America, he's won the American Championship twice in his career, Brian Schoonveld. The Americans all was confident in their own ability, but this is hard. 120 kilos each anvil weighs. Ready. 
Away we go. The first chance to see Britain's strongest man in action. On the far side, but Mark Eilif struggling. He's in last place at the moment. It's Jana Hams, followed by the Finn Rassanen. McManus is going well too. Unfortunately, Mark Eilif falling way, way behind at this stage. Brian Schoenfeld on this side, just ahead of Mark Eilif, but McManus goes into the lead. This is a phenomenal competition. McManus just at the moment. Rassenen and Hams, either side of the Latvian. And on the far side, Heinz Olesch as well. One more push will do it. Oh, I think Jana Hams has come through. He sprints over the line. I think the Dutchman just pipped. Raymond Bergmanis for second place. Schoenfeld just finishing. Mark Eilif is going to finish in last place. But what a performance by Jana Hams. Bergmanis second. And I think Johan Rassenen in third place. What a start. And what a disappointment for Britain's strongest man. Rassenen almost. But Jana Hams just finishing ahead of the Latvian. I saw how close it was. Just tough, just give it all. It's, it's almost there. Just give it one final push in. I think it was enough. <clears throat> that, that underlined the depth of competition, didn't it? Um, yeah, I didn't really, in all honesty, I didn't really feel myself off the line. I weren't sure what I was going to be like, but with that farmer's walk, I just felt like no explosive power I got to the tyre. I mean, we've done those tyres in the Britons. You know, they were flipping easy, but they just felt like dead weight, heavy flip. Um, you know, disappointing start there. It is very disappointing, really. Yeah. Flipping disappointing for Mark Eilif, you could say. Britain's strongest man only picking up one point there, but it was 40 degrees plus. That must have been a factor. Well, the action continues now in Medeca Square, but we change venue to the cricket pitch. Next up, it's a true test of a strong man. This is power lifting by any other name. Lift this giant log weighing 120 kilograms, that's 265 pounds, onto your shoulders, then above your head and lock out, put it down. And when you've done with this one, there's a whole lot more to contend with, and they are a whole lot bigger. Well, the weather got hotter and things got worse for Britain's strongest man, Mark Eilif. At the opening weight of 120 kilograms, the man from Northampton was forced to put it down. Juha Matti Rassen of Finland did better than that, but 150 kilograms was too much for him. And here's another failure. This time it's Jarno Hams from Holland, 160, too much for him. More successful though, Heinz Olesch from Germany, 165 kilograms. Look at the pain and the power, but that was as far as he could go. Mind you, Brian Schoenfeld of America made 165 kilograms look child's play, but perhaps surprisingly, he couldn't go any further either. They all had to give second best to Raymond Bergmanis of Latvia. He was in a class of his own, three times an Olympic power lifter. He was absolutely thrilled by this victory and ready to celebrate as he had done in the world final in America six years earlier. Yeah, you remember after taking first place in Las Vegas, I jump in a pool with dress, I think it's maybe today it's the same. <laughs> well, there's, look, there's a pool just over there. Do you want to go yeah. and do that now? Yeah. Go on then. So six points to the man from Latvia, the happy hippo. Happy to win and happy to cool off. Olesh and Schoenfeld sharing second spot, and this looks like being a really competitive heat, although for Mark Eilif, things looking pretty bleak already. Well, KL is nothing if not a thoroughly modern city, and in the midst of its most busy shopping area, five huge rods of iron, the Fingal's fingers, to be lifted up and pushed over as quickly as possible. They weigh between 200 and 300 kilograms, that's 440 and 660 pounds. And talking of pushing, it's time that Juha made a push for some points if he's going to keep Finland's amazing record going in World's Strongest Man. This is a very important event for you, isn't it? Yes, I need a lot of points and uh, I hope I can win this event. How aware are you that Finland every year does very well in this and now it is up to you? Yeah, 
Uh, it's hard, hard job now. I don't want to be a worse than Joko and uh, Janne. And I, Villac need a new champion. Johan Rassanen in the white. Bugmanis from Latvia Get in ready. the blue. The time is important, but more importantly, in a way, is the technique and the ability to get every part of the body moving. That is light at 200 kilos. This a little heavier at 225. Still neck and neck. Perhaps the Finn in the lead at the moment. Right down from the toes to the fingertips. You've got to be so strong. Rhythm is important as well. This is an unbelievable test of fortitude, of strength, of power and of technique. Going well, both men. That is number four for Rassanen. Now, can he do five? Not many people have managed that so far in Finkel Fingers, whether it's been in Britain's Strongest Man or World's Strongest Man. Rassanen's got a problem. He's even trying to use his head, my goodness. Bergmanis is catching. This is unbelievable. The tortoise and the hare. Can the Latvian win this one? Rassanen is finished. The time limit is 75 seconds, so he's got the time if he just keeps on leaning on this giant pole. 300 kilos, can he do it? One, two, he's running out of time. It's going to be a problem, he hasn't done it. The whistle has gone before it hit the deck. I think Bergmanis thinks he's got it, but I don't think the referee's going to give it to him. That seems so, so unfair after an enormous effort by this giant Latvian. Very hard. It's my first experience in this event. And I've done before. But I did it. All five fingers. I'm happy, but I think not taking me five. I missed it, time limit. But, but I fight. Mark Eilif was fighting a losing battle. Three fingers for him in 35.09. Heinz Olesch of Germany, though, took the lead. An immense performance, all five up and over in just over 70 seconds. It was my first time that I did it. I had some problems to lift them up. They were really slippery, but then I continued my rhythm and I got it, I got them all, so I'm pleased with it. I did everything I could, and that's the most important thing. The American Brian Schoenfeld wearing the black, and Jana Hams in the orange. Get ready! The last pairing. Now, can anybody beat that phenomenal performance by the German Heinz Olesch? 70.03 for all five. And these two guys off to a very quick start. Well, we've always talked about height being important here. If you're six feet five, six six, it really helps. These guys are nearer the six foot mark. And it's the American just in the lead. Schoenfeld going well. He's wearing gloves. That is going to help with the grip. Brian Schoenfeld, twice America's strongest man. Not this year, but previously in his career, is going well. Jana Hams is stuck. Now, can he do number five? This is a great performance. Ryan Schoonveld. He's got about another, what, 45 degrees to go. Jana Hams is struggling. Yuka Ahala, former world's strongest man, behind with those tyres for safety. This is tremendous by Schoonveld. He's going to be just outside 60 seconds, but that is victory for the American. And that has made this heat wide, wide open to see who goes through to the final. It's Cotton. Give it everything I got, you know. This is a tall man's event, and uh, you know, not having a height like uh, like Magnus Samuelson, Yuha, Yanni, all them guys, you know, they took the fingers up and they're already halfway up. We got to work at it. So victory for the pocket battleship from the U.S. of A. Olesh in second place, the Finn in third. But at the halfway stage, this really has to be one of the most open heats in the history of World's Strongest Man. Perm two from five, just four points between them. This is what a city looks like before anybody moves in. Six years ago, this was a massive rubber plantation. Now, it's about to be the most state-of-the-art city on the planet. 
This is Putrajaya, just half an hour from Kuala Lumpur, which in eight years' time will house no fewer than 350,000 people. No traffic problems at the moment. In fact, there's just one thing on the road. An amazing backdrop for this event. One of the all-time favourites in World's Strongest Man, the lorry pool. I just wonder, after this event, how favourite it will be with the competitors. Juha Rassanen. I think this guy okay, could I... have an advantage here, being so, Are so tall. 30 metres the distance, 13 tonnes, the lorry. The start always important. I'll tell you what, he wants to get lower than that if he's going to have some real impact on this lorry, but he's away now. Heading towards the first marker, 10 metres. Wearing climbing boots. I remember the first time I saw an athlete wearing climbing boots. About 10 years ago, it made a great difference, and all the guys do it now. Rassanen, those arms working overtime. Still not going too low, but certainly setting a marker here for everybody else. 13 tonnes of lorry rolling down now. Rassanen's got to keep it going. The front of that lorry has to go over the white line. I reckon this is a good target for everybody else. And that is a good time for Rassanen, 45.32. And as always, he's absolutely out on his feet. One thing is for sure, the heat and humidity is going to take its toll in this event. It's awful because as we, we have wheeled almost every day is the 20 degrees minus. <laughs> and now is the, I think, uh, almost 40 degrees. It's very hard. At the end, you feel terrible? Yeah, yeah all the time I feel that very difficult. It's awful. Well, Mark Eilif continued to battle heroically, despite having a trapped nerve, which meant he could only push off one foot properly. He knew his challenge was faltering, but he was brave to the end. I'm pleased with that. 18 stone and a bad foot, a bad trapped nerve. So, yeah, I'm just glad to finish it, really. I just don't like, not like it if I don't finish things. Well, Jano Hams did finish things, 51.81 for the Dutchman, and bad luck for Heinz Olesch, 45.84, just outside Rassenen's time. Two men left to go. Here's the first, Brian Schoonveld, absolutely psyched up. He wants the crowd to get involved as well. I'll tell you what, after that last victory, he really has put himself in as a contender. So if he can get this lorry away and rolling, it could be good news for the American. He's never made the final of World's Strongest Man. He's certainly one of the most competitive animals I've ever seen in strongman competition. And he would love to make it through to the final, and he's going well. It's still the 45.32 seconds by Juha Rassanen that's the target. Over halfway, that lorry beginning to accelerate just a little bit. That shows you just how fit these guys are, as well as being incredibly strong. He's looking relaxed, he's staying low, he's getting faster. This is going to be so, so close. If he can go under 45, he's done it, and he has done it. Fantastic, one man to go, but Brian's in the lead. Does your body feel like you're going to explode at some point then? Uh, yeah, every... You know, this is one of the hardest events, I think. It, you know, it's whole body, legs, arms. You get down to the last 10 meters, you know, your legs are burning. Your arms, your biceps, your backs are burning. You just gotta put everything you got into it and uh, pull like mad. You know, uh, leading time right now. See what Raymond Brigmanis can do. I think I can hold him off. Well, what Raymond Bergmanis could do was 52.09 seconds, not good enough to overtake the American, which meant it was a second victory in a row for Schoenfeld. Rassanen second, Olesch third, Bergmanis back in fifth. For five of them, though, still everything to play for with two events to go. For Mark Eiliff, it was the end of his challenge. His injury too serious, and he was advised to retire. Event 5 finds us in the shadow of the Patronus Towers. 
It originated in northern Spain with farm workers carrying fruit round in a wooden box and it was called the Basque Circle. Then it was the Stone Circle, the boulder holder, and in a way it's come full circle now, riding round in circles you could almost say, with two bikes weighing 300 kilograms, that's 660 pounds, to be carried on the forearms like this and taken around the podium as many times as possible. You are rationing are you now. Those giant forearms have got to be so, so effective, but the grip is equally as important. Tries to keep it high on the chest. Once round is 30 metres. So the calculation should be easy. Let's not forget that Gregor Edmonds in the last programme set a phenomenal performance of 110 metres. That's 30 for the Finn. And of course, Scandinavia have got a brilliant tradition in strongman competition. So Rassenham would love to make it through to the final. And in this heat, it's so, so close between the top five. Heading towards 70 metres now. 80, beginning to hurt. Three times round. This is great stuff by Rassenham. It's getting lower. Those arms are beginning to ache now. The lactic acid beginning to burn the forearms and the legs. He's over 100 metres, around about 108. Another superb performance by Rassanen, and that is going to be tough to beat. It was too much for Jarno Hams, despite a highly creditable performance by the Dutchman of 90.2 metres. For the giant German, Olesch, 49.7, and he almost hit the deck as well. But after two victories on the trot, for Brian Schoenfeld, his challenge suddenly hit the buffers, 60.70 metres, and down went the bikes. Raymond Bergmanis has Are competed for Latvia at three Olympic Games Let's in weightlifting. He loves and relishes this sort of competition, but what a target Rassanen has set. And another competitor here who's got a chance of making it through to the final. Coming up to 30 metres, looking skywards for divine inspiration somehow. He's looking good, short, sharp steps, solid as a rock. Coming up towards 60. This has a little quiet look there, down towards the ground. Now it's beginning to slip a little bit, but I tell you what, he's setting a cracking pace here. Jana Hams has got 90 metres, and the Latvian goes ahead of the Dutchman now. In second place, but he wants maximum points. He's got about another 10 metres to go to beat Rassanen. But that bar is getting so, so low. This is going to be close. He's down, but I think he's done it by about a metre. Maximum points for Raymond Bergmanis for the second time in this heat. How much pain were you in then? Uh, it's a, after third circle and one quarter shaking. But I, I think about my family and did it. And so, inspired by the folks back home in Latvia, Raymond Bergmanis takes victory in the Basque Circle by less than a metre. And what it means with one event to go is there's just four points separating the top five. Everything fascinatingly poised. And so beneath the tallest building in the world, we come to the most famous strongman event in the world, the Atlas Stones. Five great rocks to be picked up and placed on this wall, but the key one is this, the fifth. 165 kilograms, that's 360 pounds. Get that up and you're in with a real chance of making it through to the final. Five rocks and amazingly, we have five men in contention going into this final event. So, can you get that fifth stone up? Planning on it. Heinz? Yes. You are? Oh. Brian? Always. I don't, I don't listen to questions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, following Mark Eilis' withdrawal, Jarno Hans had to go on his own. Four stones in 37.72 was the target for the rest to follow. That was a pretty swift time by Jarno Hams for four stones, but now we've got Heinz Oles. The guy with one of the biggest chests in the world. It's over 60 inches around. Juha Rassanen now. He's got a real chance, but he's got to go fast. Rassanen hasn't got the bulk of Oles. But his long arms may be an advantage here. Now, up on the shoulder perhaps, yes for Olesh. A little bit of a different technique for Rassanen, but it's quick. One stone up. 
and the second. Oh my goodness, that was almost a calamity for Rassenen, but he's still ahead of Heinz Olesch. Heinz Olesch would have to do five if he's got any chance of making it through to the final. 37 seconds by Hams for four stones. That is the target for Rassenen, and he's destroyed it. So, Rassenen's got a real chance of making it through. We've still got Brian Schoenfeld and Bagmanis to go. Can either of these two men do five? If Olesch can do five, he could beat Rassenen and make it through to the final. If Rassenen gets five, surely he is in the final. Oh, no. Well, Heinz Olesch giving it everything. I don't think he's going to be able to do this. That sticky stuff on his arms is dripping off in this heat. I think he's had enough. Rassenen as well. But the Finn is in the lead for the time being. Do you think your four stones is quick enough? I hope so. I hope so. Are you going to watch or are you going to listen? <laughs> Just listen. Well, here we go. Schoenfeld has got a chance of making it through to the final, as does Bogmanis. But that time by Rassenen, 33-07 for four stones. The crucial target. Schoenfeld, he'd love to make the final. He's never done it before. Bogmanis has been there before. So anybody who gets five stones is definitely in the final. That is for sure. Bogmanis is going like a train. We mustn't forget that these guys are not just strong, they're very fast as well. If you could see them sprint over 30 meters, you'd be amazed. Four for Bergmanis in the fastest time. He is in the final. Schoenfeld, he's missed that time, so he has to do five. And that despite two victories earlier on by the American. Bergmanis on the far side, going for the fifth stone. Oh, that's well done by Brian Schoenfeld, but he must be disappointed. Now, come on, Raymond Bergmanis. One of the most popular men on the circuit. It's going to be close. Come on, Raymond, get it up. 160 kilos. Absolutely wonderful. Latvia will be in the final. And can the United States join him? Brian Schoonvel, if he gets this fifth one up, he's got a fighting chance. All credit to Raymond for sticking around and helping, but time has run out. What a huge disappointment for the American, but in the end, Raymond Bergmanis is number one. Schoenfeld down and out. Great stuff. That meant an awful lot to you, didn't it? Uh, unbelievable. I never lifted last stone in my life. Never. But my last final five years ago, and I had done. I'm absolutely happy and, oh, absolutely happy. Unbelievable happy. A happy Latvian and a happy Finn. Thank you, man. Thank you. Jarno is my best friend. No. <laughs> well, the joy of victory there for all to see in the face of Raymond's Bergmanis and relief for Juha Matti Rassenen, who thought maybe he was going to miss the boat. Immense disappointment for Brian Schoenfeld, so near and yet so far. And what it means is that Raymond's Bergmanis and Juha Matti Rassenen are through to the final of the Metrex Trophy. Well, Raymond, many congratulations for getting to the final because it's one of the most experienced men in Strongman. It's a great moment for you, I know. I'll tell you something, though. I know you're a big football fan as well. You get some amazing bargains down in Chinatown. I picked up this replica Man United shirt for just five quid, and I've got one for you, too. Manchester United is rubbish. I am a Guna! Round of Brawn. Welcome to the world's strongest man in Malaysia, 
and to Malacca, for more than a thousand years, one of the most strategically important ports in all of Southeast Asia. And everywhere you look, Chinese, Portuguese, Dutch and British colonial influence is there for all to see. And it remains delightfully old-fashioned, the heart of old Malaysia beating strong. Plan plan, as they say here. Chill. Take it easy. Chill, do me a favour, it's 35 degrees and this is Kuala Lumpur. Busy, noisy, vibrant, the biggest roar in Asia's tiger economy and somewhere in its midst, the kings of the human jungle. The format for the Metrex Trophy remains the same. Five heats, six strong men in each, six events in each, and the top two go through to the final. Already there, these four, among them Gregor Edmonds from Scotland. Which two from these six will join them there? Stuart Murray from Scotland, 41 years old, 173 tall, and 125 kilos. Jason Foley from Canada, age 28, height 1 meter 92, 135 kilos. I'm Jaroslav Dumet from Poland, 31 years old, 1 meter 82, 120 kilos. Bernd Kirschbamer from Austria, 37 years, 1 meter 93, 145 kilos. Jason Morandi from the USA. 23 years old, 1 meter 97, 135 kilos. Sven Carlsen from Norway. I'm 35 years old, weighing 141 kilo and I'm 188 tall. And I am the world's strongest man. What's it meant to you to be able to say that you are the strongest man in the world for the past 12 months? Oh, it's been really, really good. And I've been so close to it so many times, so it finally and it's been an unbelievable year. Power! At least I have won it once now, and but I really, really want to do it again, and I think I have a fair chance at it. Have you had a tattoo done saying you are the world's strongest man for 2001? No, but I made my own subtitles now. I have the Viking power. And so the battle to find this year's world's strongest man starts here in Medeca Square in the heart of old colonial Kuala Lumpur with the carry and drag. Carry those two anvils, 120 kilograms each, that's 265 pounds, halfway down the course, drop them here and then drag this mighty anchor, 265 kilograms, that's 660 pounds, all the way to the end of the course. Now for Stuart Murray, this is the second world's strongest man after Morocco four years ago. What lessons do you think you've learned from then for now? To try and cope with the heat is the biggest thing, John. I think it's going to be very, very hard for everyone with the heat. We'll just have to try our best and see like, what happens. Now, you've got the world's strongest man. Yes, very yeah, nah, yeah. How daunting is that? Very daunting. He's looking very fit, very strong. He'll definitely be the man to chase, I think. And what about your chances? I was going to plod away like an old dog, like I usually do. I won't give up till the very last event. Just plod away right to the end. Describing the action as ever, Paul Dickinson. Stuart Murray representing Scotland and Great Britain, a veteran of so many strongman competitions during a very, very long career. A newcomer to us, Baron Kirschbaumer from Austria, in very good shape indeed, a massive man. Another first timer in World's Strongest Man, American Jesse Marundi, the former tight end for Montana State in American football. Jarek Demek of Poland. He's not big, but he's tremendously muscular and now gaining an experience in this sort of competition all the time. The reigning champion, the defending champion, Sven Carlsen of Norway. Won it brilliantly last year and hopefully demonstrating Viking power once again.
Jessin Paulin of Canada finished second in the Canadian Championships to the very experienced Hugo Girard this year. So what a lineup for this heat. And what a competition to start it as well. 120 kilos in each arm. Away they go down the course. And at the moment, Kirsch Bamber who's in the lead. Carlson's got a bit of work to do. Good start by the Austrian. And now Carlson beginning to gain a little bit of ground. Poor old Stuart Murray on the far side. He's struggling in last place. And Carlson just having a little look across at Dimec and at Marundi the American. And Carlson is the only one managing to keep it going. In the blue on the far side is Kirsch Baumer in second place. And I thought for a moment the Austria was catching Carlson. Carlson's got a couple of meters to go. Dimec is coming through into third. And actually Murray on the far side making slow progress, but he is gaining. This is so hot. In terms of competition, and nearly 40 degrees the temperature. Absolutely blistering conditions for this first event and taking its toll on everybody. Everybody almost flat out here. Carson is just waiting and watching. Kirsch Bammer in second, Demet third. And Carson is absolutely all out. That is the time limit gone. And Sven Carson, the champion, starts with victory in this very first event. We'll have to sort out the minor places, but the Norwegian has done it. Good points as well for Austrian Kirschbaumer. Ah! Was bad, really bad. That was what I call saved by the bell. But now we started and I got the perfect six score. So now I think I can make it. Did you think you might win? Maybe. But it's very heavy to catch Sven Katz. He is the bad strongest man. But I think I will catch him. I just couldn't pull it anymore, you know? This is the, it's all I could do. Well, how tough was that for starters? Nobody completing the course, not even the world's strongest man although he did pick up the six points. Well, the action continues now in Medeca Square, but we change venue to the cricket pitch. And this is the second event, the weight throw. This weighs 56 pounds. That's the same weight as a bag of potatoes. And it's with a humble bag of spuds that our next event finds its origins. Because in days of old, in Highland Games in Scotland, they used to get a bag of potatoes and hurl them as high as they could over a bar like that. So Jarek, is this a popular sport in Poland? No. Do you think it's very easy to do? Yes, I think it's easy for me. Well, Jarek Dimmick said he thought this was easy. Here he is at four meters 10, and he was right. Very straightforward, very simple, and he was looking supremely confident at that stage. For Jess and Paulin of Canada, four meters 10, the opening height was too high. Jesse Murundi of the USA, at 4.30, he called it quits. Jarek, the confidence replaced by disappointment, he couldn't get it over 4.50. And the same fate befell Stuart Murray from Scotland. A big effort, but not good enough. I'd, I'd have thought being a Scot, that would have been right up your street there. Well, it's a Highland game event, but I don't do Highland games. I've only done that twice before I came out here. So I'm quite pleased we're getting 14 feet and at least something like 14 feet eight. How hard was it? I don't think it's really it's hard. It's just maybe a lot of power needed, but a lot of technique as well. And, if I'd longer learn the technique, maybe I could have got that weight there. Well, Bernd Kirschbaumer from Austria had the strength and the technique and the luck in off the bar for the very happy Austrian. But he was going head to head by this stage with the world's strongest man, Sven Carlsen. A bit of luck for him as well. Yes! But you can see how much it meant to these two huge men. 
So the bar has moved up to 4 metres 80, 15 feet 8 inches. Imagine trying to throw a suitcase over a double-decker bus. That's the task in hand at the moment for the Austrian Kirschbaumer. I think he's got a slight advantage over Carlsen, the only other man left in, in terms of height. He's a couple of inches taller than the defending champion. It would do him a lot of good to get this at the first attempt. Here goes. Big effort. Oh, he's well clear. That was much better than the previous height. So all the pressure now goes on to Sven Carlsen. Good effort by the Austrian. Fantastic effort there. Clear by an inch or two. And Carlsen has to follow that. Four metres 80. In the olden days, the pole vaulters would go over this without any trouble at all with bamboo poles, if you can believe it. And this a very, very long tradition in Highland Games. The weight for height. And Carlsen's failed it. So just one more attempt for the Norwegian to stay in the competition. Otherwise, it's maximum points for Austria. Slow and steady the pull has to be, right up on tiptoes. Stretch out with the fingertips. Kirschbaumer watching. He could get a victory here, and it all depends on Sven Carlsen. Oh, that was better. But the Norwegian ends up in second place. Kirschbaumer gets the maximum six points. He does very much running as part of his training, but a well-deserved lap of victory for Kirschbaumer of Austria in the weight throw. Terrific effort. A great heavyweight clash there between Kirschbaumer and Carlsen. Four metres 80 enough to give the Austrians six points, but it does mean after two events that a gap is opening up between those two and the rest. Stuart Murray back in fifth place. The Golden Triangle is the showpiece of KL's economic development. High-rise blocks and shopping malls fighting for trade, but it's all come to a grinding halt today for the third event, the Fingal's Fingers. Five huge rods of iron weighing between 200 and 300 kilograms, that's 440 to 660 pounds, to be lifted up and flipped over as quickly as possible. And there's a new layout to the event this year, so as you can see, it's clearly a race to the end. Downtown KL with the new layout for Fingal's Fingers. And there is Jarek Dimek, lying in third place overall Get at the right. moment. And the big, tall American, Jesse Marundi. Now, Marundi, the first time he's ever tried this event, much, much taller than Dimek. And that showed with the first one, 200 kilos, now on to 225. Leaning into it, Dimek catching just a little bit. And Dimek is absolutely sprinting between each of these fingers. Neck and neck, America, Poland. And I just wonder if Marundi, being about five inches taller, will have the advantage in the end. Must keep his arms straight and his legs. Dimek is there. This is absolutely fantastic, pushing it down. Well, here goes the American on number five, but what has happened to Dimek? He thinks he's gone ahead of the American on number four, so he's just biding his time. Hoping the American doesn't get number five, but he does. Now, is that a big tactical error by Dimek? I don't know, but one thing is for sure, Marundi has done superbly. And as far as Dimek is concerned, if that was tactics, well, it was wrong. Fantastic performance. Right. Were you expecting to do that? Yeah. Uh, I did poorly the first time I did this in contest. I trained it really hard. It paid off today, so I'm happy. What's the secret of success? Speed, period. Everything is strong, man, is speed. You gotta be strong, you gotta have good wind, but it's a timed event. Fastest guy wins. Stuart Murray found it all too much. Just one finger up in 32.3 seconds. But Jesson Paulin, four in 68 dead, gave the two leaders something to think about. There is Kirschbaumer of Austria, did superbly in the last event, came away with maximum points. And next to him, the defending champion. What a start it's been for Sven Carlsen. First in the first event, then second. Absolutely determined as always. And a cracking time by Marundi, the five fingers in 49.5.
A sprint to the first one. Only 200 kilos, that's over 440 pounds. The next one closer to 500. Carlson just in the lead. Far more experienced than Kirschbaumer, that's for sure. But Kirschbaumer, I think, is getting better and better as the events go on. It's still Norway in first place, Austria in second. 49.5, remember, is the time that Sven Carlsen and Kirschbaumer is trying to beat. And he's on the last one already. Can he keep it going? About six feet one inches tall as Kirschbaumer finishes. And Carlsen, 21 stones in body weight. He's destroyed the time set by Marundi. And that is victory number two out of three events. Viking power has done it again. Kirschbaumer absolutely gutted, but a decisive victory for Carlson. When you saw the American guy go that quickly, how much of an incentive for you was that? Huh. As you know, he's about eight seconds behind my best anyway. So I wasn't really scared. And the only thing I was like, get to the final, spending as little energy as possible, and there the walking will roar again. Promise. And that's why Sven Carlsen is the world's strongest man, supremely confident, almost with the handbrake on and winning the Fingal's fingers. And if Carlsen's going to get to the final, who's going to join him there? Will it be Kirschbaumer, Dimek or Morunde? Presidential Palace at Putrajaya, the centerpiece of what will be the most modern city in the world when it's completed in 2010, housing 350,000 people. And it's here we find the next event, the carpool. Each of these vehicles weighs 1,500 kilograms and it has to be dragged up the hill 25 meters to the end of the course. Two cars on the front row of the grid, and one of them's a pole. So here is Jarek Dimek, he's in third place overall, but on the same points as his competitor in the carpool, Jesse Marundi of the United States. The leader at the moment is Paul La of Canada, who's already been. 36 seconds. Stuart Murray, unfortunately, did not complete the course. Dimek, packed full of muscle. Marundi a little bit taller. And this is becoming a real sprinter's event. And can you believe the speed at which these guys are going? With 1,500 kilograms of car they've got a drag now going up the hill. Marundi just slowing a little bit. Dimek is going, staying low, using those powerful arms to pull himself up the hill. And he's finished now. A fantastic time for Dimek. 20.33. Absolutely incredible. Marundi finishes on 29.57. So he goes into second place. But what about Dimek? That was phenomenal. I guess we're hard at the end. It's a good fair event, though. I think there will be some faster times than that, though. The last five metres, how much harder are they than the rest? Ten times. Well, that sounds it's awesome, doesn't it? But that's right. what's in it's store now for Kirschbaumer. Lying in second place at the moment in this heat. Four points behind Carlson. And Carlson has got away to a cracking start. Two first places and one second in three events so far. But 20.33 by Dimek, that's an incredible time. Kirschbaumer slightly the heavier of the two, slightly the taller as well. So here we go, the last pairing. And Carlson head down, arms pumping, is driving up the hill now. Kirschbaumer a couple of metres behind him. Carlson slowing just a little bit, but still ahead. Carlson, could he be going for victory number three? kirschbaumer has got about four metres to go. Carlson just outside. Victory goes to Poland, but only by a fraction. And Kirschbaumer still trying to stop that clock under 28 seconds, which he does. He didn't quite realise he'd finished. But another great performance by Carlson, the Norwegian looking every inch a champion. That was a nice draw. I tried to save energy here, so going into the final, that's every time. How much energy has that man got to save? 
second place for the world's strongest man. Victory, though, for Yarek Dimmick, and that was important for him because it meant that he and Kirschbaumer are now level on 17 points with just two events to go. It may only have been a small acorn, but it produced one heck of a tree. This is the giant log lift. 380 kilograms, that's more than 840 pounds, four of me and a bit, to be lifted above the head as often as possible. And this heat now is fascinatingly poised with Berendt and Yarrick level on points behind Sven at the top. And there's only one place in the final for either of these two. So the key question is, how many of these can you manage? I don't know. Uh, I hope that I can beat Dimmick and, and that is my uh, only chance. And how many can you do? I, c I think that two, three more like Bernd, because I want that the other guys come between me and Bernd. To give you a cushion. Cushion? Carlson! Sven Carlson, well what a start it's been to the defence of his title, but this is a toughie for all of them. We've got some very strong guys in there. They've got shoulders like granite, these guys. The effective weight, around about 125 kilos. That's just short of 20 stone. So they've got to lock out their arms. Douglas Edmonds, the referee, counts them through each repetition. And this slightly heavier than the log we saw in Britain's Strongest Man earlier on this year. But this is good by Carson. What do you expect? from a man who's an accomplished weightlifter, a former world champion in powerlifting too. Endurance a factor here as well. And the lactic acid beginning to fill those giant muscles up. And that is it, 16 repetitions. And boy, did that hurt. A little slight twinge in the back there, but no problems for Sven Carlson and a very, very good total. Well, Stuart Murray couldn't get anywhere near that. Just five repetitions for the Scot. Better for the American, 12 repetitions for Murundi. And a good performance from the Canadian, Paula, getting 15. Now, though, it was time to get serious. So here goes Yarek Demet. Equal on points with Kerschbaumer. So heading towards One. the total, he hopes, by One. Sven Carlson of 16. Look at this. Two. So easy, Three. only a little twitch of the legs. Four. Look at the size Five. of his biceps and triceps. They're Six. about 23 inches around. Seven. If ever you get the chance to get a tape Eight. measure and measure around your leg, Eight. I can guarantee most of you won't Eight. be as big as these guys' arms. Eleven. He's more like a bodybuilder. Eight. Now let's watch the countdown Eight. to try and take the lead. Can he go Eight. ahead? Eight. Of the world's Eight. strongest man from last year. He's equaled the Norwegian. One more to go, and he's got the lead. That is fantastic. What a powerhouse this pole is. Can he go for 18? No, 17. A little tweak of the elbow there, but another great performance by Demek. You equaled the world record there. Fantastic. This is what I got? 17, Gerard. 17 for you. Oh, when well, I'll be... No. Maybe I'll be, I'll be doing it one more. <laughs> but you must be happy with that. Not yet. After Bernd. Well, this is the man that Demek is talking about, Kerschbaumer. Get set. Equal on points before this what event with the pole. But what a performance Whoa. Demek has set, and that could spell Two. trouble for the Austrian. He's Three. not looking all that comfortable. Four, but, but looks can be deceptive. Dougie Edmonds saying, Five. take it lower. Six. That's only six, and already looking a little seven, bit ponderous, seven, a little seven, bit seven. slow. I just wonder if this is going to be a huge turnabout in the chances seven, of Kirschbaumer trying to get to the seven. final. Dougie Edmonds disallowing that one. But well, Kirschbaumer's done so well to this point in the competition, but that seven. is it. Oh, now then, what has happened to the Austrians' chances of making it through the final? And he may have picked up an injury as well. Bad news for the Austrian, but good news for Demek. Happy now? No, now I can have, I can say I'm really, really happy. Do you think you're in the final yet? I think so because I, a lot of training the stones. Now, no like in last year. Now I have stone 
in my dream I can training that I not afraid of this events. A big win for the man from Poland and equaling the world record of 17 repetitions. Bitterly disappointing for Kirschbaumer and it means that he now has a four point gap to make up on Dimek. For Carlsen, he's in the final and feeling good in his understated kind of way. Can't you see it coming now? Tor is near, Odin is near. Look up, they are here. Viking power forever! shadow of the Petronas Towers for the last event and while the second place in the final is all but decided funny things can happen in the most famous strongman event of all the Atlas Stones the muscle man Demek up against the world's strongest man Carlson of Norway now, Bernd Kerschbaumer of Austria has achieved three Norway. stones already, Carlson. so that means Demek must get four in order to join Carlsen in the final. So this could be a bit of a show, but nevertheless, it's going to be competitive. Carlsen will want to go out with a bang. Demek rippling with muscle. Carlsen far more experienced. He will know precisely what he's got to do. Wearing gloves and those armbands which protect the arms but more importantly, help with extra grip on those massive stones. Look at the size of that stone compared with Demek himself. This is stone number four for Sven Carlsen, 140 kilos, 308 pounds. That is up easily. Now this is the stone that could take the pole into the final. If he gets it, he's gonna join Carlsen and he's made it. He realizes it. Carlsen gives up on number five, it doesn't matter. What a pair of strong men we've got in the final. Number five, beyond even the strength of Yannick Dimek. It's going to be a great final for these two. It's really good for this sport in my country because when we go to final, in next year will be the more sponsors, more interesting in my country, the sport. While Yarek was thinking about getting to the final and sponsorship opportunities, Jessen Paulat was actually winning the Atlas Stones, getting all five up, and he may be a name for the future. For the moment, though, it's Carlsen and Dimek who make it through to the final of the Metrex Trophy for the world's strongest man. Six places filled, four to go. Sven, many congratulations, looking in fantastic shape to defend your title. I'll tell you one thing, though, I know you're a big music fan. I've been at the Chinatown pit, that's some fantastic CD bargains. Just for a quid, you know, Iron Maiden, Metallica, ACDC. Sorry, John, but I only listen to Britney Spears! <laughs>
and this is going to be a first test in World's Strongest Man for Mick Gosling. So impressive in the British competition in Wales, but this is a step up, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Manchester City playing Manchester United, isn't it? So we've got experience. From what I've seen, just uh, Heat's going to play a, lot, a big part. So, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm confident than I was this morning, so watching, so I'll see what I can do. Now, it's your first time abroad as well, isn't it? So yeah. how much is the whole experience getting to you? Yeah, it's the biggest. The flight was 12 hours. That was big enough. Coming over here and seeing all your heroes as well. You know, it turned around. It's like Bill Casmo, like three times bigger than me behind me. But, you know, it can be a daunting experience, but, you know, it's a good experience as well. Are you quite excited as well? I am, yeah. I'm not nervous, funny enough. I mean, the British, I was very nervous because there's a lot of expected of me. But, come on, yeah, I'm not because there's nothing expected of me. So if we do well, you know, so be it. Well, the first challenge is the carry and drag. Carry these two giant anvils that weigh 120 kilograms each to the halfway point on the course and then drag this massive anchor, 285 kilograms, to the end. Commentary as ever from Paul Dickinson. What a lineup it is for Mick Gosling in his very first World's Strongest Man competition from Brinsford in Wolverhampton. He's no midget, 1 metre 96, 127 kilos, and he did so well to be runner-up in Britain's Strongest Man. Tibor Mijaros of Hungary, a world record holder in powerlifting. Comparative novice at these sort of events, but tremendously strong. Torbjorn Samuelsson, of course, his brother, is a former World's Strongest Man himself. You can never count this Swede out. Next to him, a former finalist, Canada's champion, Hugo Girard. He weighs in at a massive 160 kilos. And the guy next to Hugo, Mariusz Pujanowski of Poland, well, he missed last year totally. He had a few problems back in his home country of Poland, but he's here, and boy, is he muscular, and doesn't he look strong? And finally, Carl Gillingham of the United States. His family is steeped in strength. Father, brother, they're all very, very strong men as well. Take your grip. Both of those anvils weigh 120 Ready. kilograms each. That's the size of a small motorbike, and away we go. Pujanowski and Girard in the lead. Mick Gosling on the far side going well. But look at Pujanowski. He's absolutely flying. He's meters ahead of the rest now. Mick Gosling still in about fourth place. Look at the muscles on the pole. Pujanowski is accelerating away. Nobody's done it this fast before. Can he keep going right to the finish? Yes, he can. Oh, my goodness. That is 27 seconds. Unbelievable. Girard is miles behind, but still in second place. Gillingham and Gosling there as well. Torbjorn Samuelsson miles behind at the moment. That was a phenomenal performance by Mariusz Pujanowski. Gerard flat on his back. Everybody else has gone to a grinding halt. And Pujanowski finished, what, about 40 seconds ago. Gerard looks as though he's headed for decent points here. But what a performance by the pole. I keep repeating myself, but I've never seen anything like that. Gillingham is flat out. Gerard has stopped moving. Everybody else including Gosling on the far side, absolutely dead on their feet. Girard looks as though he will finish second, but in the end there was only one competitor in it. Girard, he can't believe what he's just witnessed there. Pujanowski was like Superman. But very good start. Yes, yes, good. Good events. Great. I'm happy. Okay. Does the heat get to you out there or not? Of course it does. It's very humid. We sweat a lot. It didn't help for the grip on the chain. It didn't seem to affect Marius though. How impressive was that performance by him? <clears throat> we said the end of the qualifier. I got third, so it's not a disaster. I was hoping for as high as second. I came very close to getting Hugo at the end, but I couldn't quite get him. So I'm still not out of it. I'm pleased with that. So, it's a good event. Certainly, sorry to the man out from the boys. I will feel it now, though. I could do with half an hour rest. But if Mick Gosling is a man, what does that make Pujanowski? A superman, an amazing time, and six points for the pole.
Next up, it's a true test of a strong man. This is power lifting by any other name. Lift this giant log weighing 120 kilograms, that's 265 pounds, onto your shoulders, then above your head and lock out, put it down. And when you've done with this one, there's a whole lot more to contend with, and they are a whole lot bigger. Well, these days, the rules of the competition have changed. If you don't manage a single lift, you don't get a single point. So it was crucial for Gosling to at least get a success at the opening weight. And this he managed to do at 120 kilograms. But that was as far as he was going to go. At 150 kilograms, Torbjorn Samuelsson, the Swede, was successful. But that was the most that he could manage. The American Gillingham at 150 kilograms, and success for him too. He was pleased about that. As the weight got heavier, the big boys came into their own. Metzaros, a power lifter by trade at 155 kilograms, might not appear initially to have locked out, but the judges gave it to him, much to his relief. Next up, Pujinowski. If at first you don't succeed, have another go. Here was his first attempt at 155. Look at those veins, look at those biceps, look at those forearms, look at that face. And at 155, a success. But he couldn't match Hugo Girard of Canada. The world record for this event, 180 kilograms. At 155, it was child's play. At 160, it was almost absurdly easy but Girard was more concerned about conserving energy for the battles to come. That was a sort of exhibition performance, really. You didn't have to stretch too hard there, did you? <sighs> you know, uh, it's very hard for me not going uh, to attempt the world record. You know, it uh, could be the only chance you got to do it right here at the world. So, uh, but you got to aim uh, for the big one. So safe energy, I think I'm going to need it. That was fairly straightforward, though, to, to win that. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good event for me. Uh, I knew what I could get, and uh, you know, they pushed me hard, but not hard enough. Confirmation then of victory for the Canadian ahead of the pole, Mick Gosling at least picking up one point for that one successful lift at 120 kilograms. But after only two events, it seems as though the top two are pulling clear of the rest already. colonial splendor of Medeca Square to KL 2002 and the shopper's paradise that's known as the Golden Triangle. You can get anything here, even some Fingal's fingers. Five huge rods of iron weighing between 200 and 300 kilograms, that's 440 and 660 pounds to be lifted up and pushed over as quickly as possible. Now if anything's been found during the course of this year's event is that the strength in depth of world's strongest man gets more and more apparent year on year. And Torbjorn Samuelsson, part of the great Samuelsson dynasty of strong men from Sweden, you must be aware of how it must get tougher every 12 months. Every year is much tougher and I think like before the strength is about the same as it has been over the years but back in the days I think it was like maybe two or three guys that were good on everything. Now we have like eight of ten guys that's good in everything so it's you can't have a bad side. So does that mean that from a training point of view you have to focus on every every possible discipline? Yeah, you have to focus on too much now. <laughs> well, you have to train really hard on, on each event, otherwise you have no chance. A chance for Mick Gosling now to make some recompense for a poor performance in the overhead lift, but I think he'll be more suited to this. And up against Torbjorn Samuelsson, much bigger in the arms, much bigger in the chest than Gosling, but they're both very, very good athletes indeed. Get ready! Now let's hear it for Mick Gosling. Six feet five inches tall, knocking on the door of 20 stones in body weight, just behind Samuelsson. And Samuelsson has always lived in the shadow of Magnus, his more distinguished strongman brother. But Gosling is not going to give up without a fight, that's for sure. The aim, of course, to get the fifth 300 kilogram Fingal's finger flipped over to stop the clock at the fastest possible time. And Samuelson's still in the lead, but Mick Gosling may be catching him a little bit. Samuelson goes on to number five. Now, come on, Mick, if you can get four, you could be in with good points here. 
Yes, he can, and the time is good as well. Just around 40 seconds. Samuelson going for number five. This is a good performance. That is brilliant by the Swede. Now, what about Mick Gosling? He's looking tired. He's crumbling just a little bit. And that is a finish for Mick Gosling. It's still a good performance by the Wolverhampton man. Even better, of course, by Sweden Samuelson. Yeah, I'm pleased. It's, uh, it's really hard to know how fast you should go, but I'm pleased with that. Uh, of course, as I said, uh, I did quite bad yesterday, so now it's motivation-wise it feels good to have done something well for the events to come. And it's a target for everybody else to chase. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to go out first if you do something quite well, because then the other guys have to really put up speed when you do that. A lot of things can go wrong, so that's, that can be good. The challenge thrown down to the Hungarian, and he wasn't up to it. Just three fingers in 64.3. Carl Gillingham managed three as well in a much quicker time, and then it was the big two. There's Pujanowski, looking very rugged and very determined. And I think as this competition goes on, he's going to get more and more confident. Hugo Girard has been there and done it for many, many years now, so he knows exactly what's required here. Mick Gosling is still lying in second place overall, so the target for these guys to go ahead of Gosling, four of Fingal's fingers in 40.62. And both Girard and Pujanowski are off to a flying start. This is brilliant by the Canadian. Now on to 250 kilos. Pujanowski now on number three. Girard is going so, so well. If he gets this over in the next couple of seconds, he's got ahead of Gosling. And the Canadian will certainly do that under 30 seconds. Girard is on number five. Pujanowski a long way behind, still on number four. Only Samuelson has done five so far. 48.81, and that is going to be beaten by Girard. We have a winner. And Pujanowski behind him is still on number four and can't manage to shift it at the moment, my goodness. Oh. Well, the officials behind him chasing him all over the place. He still wants to flip number four. Girard looking a bit cocky and confident. And so he might. He's won that one, Pujanowski. Well, there is a weakness in his armory. And that means that Mick Gosling has done brilliantly. Technically, I made a few mistakes, but they were feeling quite uh, light. So I knew I just have to keep same pace and uh, make sure I do five. And you're now at halfway stage, but you're in a very commanding position in the group now. You know, like I said before, it's not over until the fat lady sings. So three more events to go. I really like the way I am now, where I'm standing. Three more events, one at a time. Then uh, try to save ourselves, make sure we get in the final, and then we open, we open the, the engine there. The voice of experience, another win for the Canadian, an excellent result for Gosling, and with Pujanovsky back in fourth place, it means that while Girard is out on his own at the top, Gillingham and Samuelson have closed the gap on the pole. Imagine building a city the size of Nottingham, half an hour outside London, from scratch. That's what they've done here at Putrajaya, outside Kuala Lumpur, which by 2010 will house 350,000 people. Enough of that. Next event, you know it well. 16-ton truck, 30-metre course, pull it. Another chance for Britain's Mick Gosling to impress. He won this event but that was back in North Wales in May this year. This is in Kuala Lumpur, and it's around about 40 degrees. It's absolutely blisteringly hot. He's got to stay low. Here we go, Mick Gosling going for big points once again. As always, the most difficult thing is getting this giant truck started. But once it's on a bit of a roll, if you can just keep it going for 30, 40, 50 seconds, where endurance plays a huge factor. You've got a real chance of big points. Uh, Gosling, 
First time in Britain's Strongest Man this year and almost amazed himself and his family by making it into the World's Strongest Man competition. But so far, so good for Big Mick. He's got a very strong brother back at home as well, who by all accounts is even stronger than his brother. But Mick Gosling wants to stop that clock as fast as possible. It's looking pretty good at the moment. And it's just outside 50 seconds, 50.43. But that is another good effort by the Wolverhampton man. Gosling has done it again. It's uh, 30 metres instead of 25, so it makes a difference. Can you tell me the time? 50. That was good for me. Please, with that. Let me for a lot of heavier guys are doing 45 seconds, so that puts you, I reckon, about third place there. Hopefully. <laughs> Well, he finished, which is more than Tibor could manage, 24 metres for the Hungarian. After him, Carl Gillingham of the USA, 51.03, just a bit slower than Mick. And then it was Torbjorn Samuelsson from Sweden, 52.43. Things looking good for the Englishman. Only two men to go, and it's still Mick Gosling for Great Britain in the lead. But here goes Pujanowski, his muscles fit to bursting point here. The definition is absolutely unbelievable, just like his teammate, Demek. And the two athletes, well, they were sent away to a health farm before they came here to KL. So very well conditioned and superbly prepared for this year's World's Strongest Man competition. And at the moment, despite the fact there are still two events to go, he's got a real chance of making it through to the final. And looking good here, Hugo Girard, the only competitor to go after Pujanowski. Mick Gosling's time, 50.43. And I hate to say this, but Pujanowski is going faster. This is good from the pole. He's hardly let up at all down this 30-metre course. Pujanowski stops the clock, 46.84. And that is a big lead with only Hugo Girard to go in this competition. Another great performance. Very hot. Yes, very hot here. Condition is no good. But you are leading. You are first. Maybe. Well, it's not maybe, it's absolutely definitely. But Girard, a second place and two first places in are pole position. This guy is absolutely massive. There was a report that Hugo Girard's chest earlier on this year had been pumped up to 70 inches. That is absolutely unbelievable. But Girard head down, legs pumping, arms pulling on that rope. He's looking awesome. Have you ever seen a pair of shoulders broader than that? I very much doubt it. And Girard could be heading for victory number three. Pujanowski's time, 46.84. And I hate to say it once again, but I think Mick Gosling's going to be relegated to third place. Still good points for the Brit, but it's all between Girard and Pujanowski now. Can he beat 46 seconds? Yes, he can, by a mile. It is victory number three for the Canadian. And this is looking an awesome display by Hugo Girard of Canada. Three first places in a row. Superb performance. Is that pretty straightforward for you? <laughs> you know what? Weather was it's very hot today. A lot, a lot of waiting. I was a bit tired, but uh, I did what I do best. Went out there, gave my best, and we wait for the result. Well, you've won that. You're in the final. What do you do for the next two? Take the foot off the pedal. Yeah. Now try to relax, spend as much energy as possible, and start get ready mentally for the final. Well, Girard's been there so many times before, he desperately wants to improve on previous performances. Another victory for him there, and he's into the final once more. Will it be Pujanowski, or will it be Gosling who joins him? Mick has a lot of ground to make up with just two events to go. Event five finds us in the shadow of the Petronas Towers, the world's tallest buildings, and this is the Basque Circle. 
Well, just about every form of transport has been either pulled or lifted by our strongmen over the years, but perhaps appropriately in a city that many would say is plagued by scooters, we have for the first time mopeds. The guys have to carry these bikes that weigh 300 kilograms, that's 660 pounds, on their forearms around the circle as many times as possible. Get your motors running, this is going to be really hard. indescribable heat which took its toll on the Hungarian just 53.5 meters for him Samuelson 76.9 that was better but look at the effort Carl Gillingham 94.3 close to breaking point and disappointing for Mick Gosling 84.3 crucial now to see how the pole could perform here goes Mr. Muscles once again Mariusz Puzianowski Absolutely ready? incredible definition Lift in his upper go. body. He can't see much of his legs at the moment. He's got those knee straps on. So 300 kilograms just resting on two giant and very muscular forearms. He's got to pick up at least a third place in this event to make sure of a place in the final. We've still, of course, got the Atlas Stones to go. But that would seal it for the pole. And Hugo Girard is looking good for a place in the final as well. He's absolutely tearing round the course. That's 60 metres already. Kuzianowski is heading towards the mark set by Mick Gosling at 84, and he's gone past. So surely he's got that third place he wanted. That is 90 metres. Now, nobody has managed to go four times round. Can Kuzianowski, the crowd urging him on. This is another phenomenal performance. Four times round, that is incredible. Just over 120 metres. He's hardly out of breath. And even more than that, he's not even sweating. And that in a temperature of 45 degrees. Oh, easy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, follow that. We've just seen one of the most incredible performances in strongman competition. Are you ready? Now it's the overall Lift leader, Hugo Girard of Canada up high on that massive chest i just wonder if he's got a tactic up his sleeve here he's got to try and conserve energy for that final and for the final event in this heat of course so girard following pushanowski and he's going to stop on 30 meters he still gets a point and that is using tactics a very wise head on a massive pair of shoulders this is the voice of maturity isn't it now you know it's very hard for me not to go all the way, but the uh, experience taught me that anything you can say is going to be useful in the final. And when you see Marius do four and, you know, push himself to the limit, are you, are you watching that thinking, silly boy? Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, it makes me happy. So it, it's not as hard for me to do only one lap then. You know, you want him to go out there, spend as much energy as he can. And uh, on the long run, that's going to pay off. 120 metres, how much longer could the pole have gone on? Six points for him, and that guaranteed his place in the final alongside Hugo Girard. Mick Gosling doing incredibly well in fourth place at the moment, but this had to be an immensely tough heat for him. And so we come to the Atlas Stones to round things off. An exhibition event in all but name now, but when it comes to the Stones, it's a matter of pride. Hugo Girard and Mariusz Prusianowski in this last event, another head-to-head -head which could be explosive and I think it could be very, very fast as well. He's enjoyed himself here. Both men heading towards the final. And the final building up very nicely indeed. So here we go. Can either of them get five up? It's neck and neck at the moment. Girard just sprints into the lead. Those massive stones, this third one, 130 k's, 286 pounds, almost dunks it like a basketball. Oh, and the second one for Marius has crashed to the ground. He'll have to go back and put that one up. Girard now on number five, 160 kilos. I wonder what the judges will say about this one. They are supposed to be put up on the wall in order. We'll have to bring you up to date with that afterwards, but look at Girard. He conserved energy in the last event, but he went flat out and got five, and Pujanowski's done it as well. 
Well, there's no doubt about who the two strongest men are in this heat. Hugo Girard and Matthias Pujanowski have put on a real show here. Tremendous performance by both men. While well, Carl Gillingham actually won the Atlas Stones ahead of Hugo Girard, Pujanowski only given two stones because he put them up in the wrong order, but it had no effect on the outcome. He and Girard were already safely through to the final, which means that when it comes to the lineup for the final of the Metrex Trophy, we now have seven men from Europe and one from North America. Marius, many congratulations on getting to the final. You made it two years ago. I think you're in better shape this time and a serious contender. I'll tell you something, though. Get some fantastic bargains in Chinatown. I picked up a whole load of T-shirts for just 20p each. In fact, I got this one for you. One size fits all. Penny my color. This year's World's Strongest Man comes from Malaysia. It's 45 years now since the sun set on the British Empire in this part of the world, but even as recently as then, if you wanted to get around the busy, bustling back streets of any town or city, there were only two ways to do it. You either walked or you went like this. But nowadays in the capital Kuala Lumpur, this is the only way to get about, the only way to avoid the stifling traffic jams. But you really are taking your life into your own hands only the very strongest survive. Metrex trophy for the world's strongest man. Five heats, this is the last one now. Six strong men in each, six events in each, two to go through to the final. Eight men are there already, seven from Europe and one from North America. Two of these six will complete the lineup. Jedruna Savitka from Lithuania, 27 year old, one meter 90. 145 kilograms. Johnny Perry, North Carolina, USA. 29 years old, 6 foot 6, 175 kilos. Your market, Iceland, 28. 1 meter 96 centimeters, 162 kilos. I'm Ode Hogan from Hawaii, I'm 52 years old. 1 meter 93, 135 kilos. Daniel Wirtanen from Finland, 33 years old, 1 meter 96 centimeters, 130 kilos. Dave Warner from Yorkshire in England, 33 years old, 1 meter 85 tall, 135 kilos. Medeca Square is where old Malaya meets new Malaysia. The remains of the colonial era contrasting with the huge high-rises that dominate the KL skyline these days. And huge is the task facing these guys in the first event. Having to carry those anvils that weigh 120 kilograms, that's 265 pounds each, all the way down the course to this point where they drop them, and they're then confronted by this mammoth tyre, 400 kilograms, that's 880 pounds, to be flipped to the end of the course. Now for Dave Warner, it's his first attempt at World's Strongest Man. Are you a bit daunted by it all? Uh, yeah, um, stood next to these guys here. It's, it's uh, an experience in itself and uh, the next step is to actually compete against them. So fingers crossed I get to the end of this one with a, with a decent score. Your commentator, who else? Paul Dickinson. 
John Valgear leads out the six competitors for this first event. And Valgear continuing the great tradition of Icelandic strongmen. He's two meters tall. A former basketball player, a novice at strongman, so he's got a lot to prove. And next to him, Great Britain's David Warner from Knaresborough, near Harrogate in Yorkshire. Finished fourth in Britain's Strongest Man. This is very first World Strongest Man competition. Next to him, the giant Johnny Perry, by far and away the biggest man. Six feet six, weighs about 24 stones. In better shape than he was last year, that is for sure. Next to him, former world's strongest man, Jani Vertanen of Finland. He won the title two years ago, but last year, of course, he and everybody else lost out to Sven Carlsen. Next is the strongest man in Lithuania, silver medalist in world championship powerlifting, Zidrinas Savikas. Overcoming a severe injury last year where he tore both patella tendons badly. And finally, the 52-year-old Odd Haugen from Norway. Unbelievably, 30 years ago, he won the Mr. Norway bodybuilding title. Take your grip. As always, these anvils weighing in at 120 kilos. That's over 19 stones. And the former world's strongest man, Jani Virtanen, away to a flyer. David Warner's not going too badly. Savikas of Lithuania next to Virtanen. And look at that, five tyres in a row, but now Virtanen goes into the lead. Johnny Perry of the USA has got a lot of catching up to do. Savikas leading at the moment. Odd Haugen, the veteran, going well, just outside Savikas. Savikas looks as though he's coming away to win this one. He's got one more flip to do. He thought he'd won it. He does win it. And second place is Johnny Perry. Virtanen in third. Dave Warner's fallen behind quite a lot there. But what a start for Savikas. Dave Warner will finish in fifth place. And not a happy baptism in this year's World's Strongest Man for Jean Valgier of Iceland. That was very tough indeed. But what a performance by Zidrunas Zavikas of Lithuania. I'm happy. I'm very nervous before first event. But now I won it. And I have a chance. You have a chance to win the whole thing, you think? Uh, I have a chance to go to final. Maybe it will be first, maybe second. And I, I hope to be in final. I was trying not to focus so much on myself, but I was looking at everybody. So, so close. It's good heat. You were going so well on the farmer's walk. Yeah, <laughs> lifted the tyre up and just uh, didn't have much power left in my legs. Um, it's normally a good event for me. I did very well with the tyre in the Britons. But in this heat, it's very hard to get any air in. Um, all the guys are overheating now. They're covered in ice packs and towels and keeping out the sun. But uh, I'll just have to dig in there. I hope that'd have been a better event for me. But never mind. It's 44 degrees. It's never like that in Iceland, is it? I don't think I've ever been in 44 degrees in my whole life. This is crazy. <laughs> but you have to wonder, would it be any more sensible doing it in Reykjavik in the depths of winter? Anyway, just the one point for the Icelander, but six for the man from Lithuania. We move across Medeka Square to the cricket pitch for the second event, the weight throw. Throwing a four-stone child over a double-decker bus may not be the most politically correct sporting activity, but that's how the strong men describe this next event, because they have to throw this 56-pound weight as high as possible over that bar. Now, the world record stands at 18 feet, 8 and a half inches, but get it over 15 and you're doing well. So here goes David at his opening height. Only two attempts allowed for each competitor, otherwise you're eliminated. Four metres ten, 13 feet, four inches. He has been practising this event a little bit, but he hasn't got very much experience at Highland Games, which is where this all started many, many years ago. So here we go, good rhythm. Then you must reach as high as you can. Whoa, that's not a good start for David. And let's hope he doesn't get eliminated at this early stage. He needs the points. He's a good friend and training partner of Mal Kay, who's a long-time supporter of Strongman in Britain. 
So if you're watching Mal, come on, let's hear it now for David Warner. Let's get it over. Oh, that was so close. So he's fallen at the first hurdle. He'll only get a single point from this competition. That's very disappointing for David Warner. I can see you're bitterly upset by that. Uh, yeah, to put it mildly. Uh, I have practiced that. I went to the trouble of having one of those things made. And uh, I don't know what happened there. I felt like I had the height. I just didn't get it going backwards far enough. But um, it's a difficult thing to do. It's more technical than strength. But uh, back to the drawing board for that one, I think. Well, John Valgier of Iceland's had to go back to the drawing board. He's got this last attempt from two to clear him four metres fifty. Otherwise, he's gone. He's over six feet six inches tall. He's certainly got the reach, but has he got the technique? Big pull required. Oh, he's blown it. He's absolutely furious with himself, and he's only the second man to be eliminated in this competition so far. Well, next up, it was Odd Haugen, who, with a bit of help from the bar, made it at four meters 50. Johnny Perry needed no such assistance. Look at that, it just flew over. For Zavikas, not perhaps quite so impressive, but clear nonetheless. But here was a former world's strongest man really suffering. Jani Vietnam eliminated at 4.50, and fourth place was his. Bad mood at the moment? Yeah. Representing the United Good States. Good mood later. Yeah. Perry. And one throw later, yeah. it was the end of Odd Haugen. He couldn't make it at 4.70. Johnny Perry of the United States now. Just two men left in the competition. Zavikas of Lithuania. And this guy, he really is a man mountain. He looks a lot fitter than he did last year, that's for sure. 175 kilos in body weight. That is an absolutely phenomenal body weight to be at. But is it going to help him in this event? He's got to be explosive. Long pull, and he's got it by a mile. That was superb for the American. So Savikas has to follow that. He reaches as high as he can possibly go. You can't do better than that. Zidrunas Savikas now of Lithuania to see if he can match Johnny Perry's performance, which really was superb. Now Savikas a little bit shorter than Johnny Perry by a good couple of inches, so that might be a disadvantage, but being a silver medalist in World Championship Standard Powerlifting does make him a real contender, that's for sure. Oh, that was close. He only missed out there by about an inch. Now he has to take his second effort very quickly. Let's see if we can spot anything wrong with the technique. Not really. Not a lot wrong with that. It almost had the height, but not the depth to go over the bar. So this to match the American. And then the bar will go up once more. The crowd getting behind the Lithuanian. Oh, that was close again. And unfortunately, Savikas will finish in second place. Victory goes to Johnny Perry. A wry smile from the man from Lithuania. Second spot for him. Utter dismay, though, for David Warner, who failed to record a single throw and so got no points. It means that Savikas and a philosophical Perry are now clear at the top. It's, 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 it's fun. I mean, I love this. It's, if I was in last place, I'd still be having a ball. It wouldn't matter at all. This is just, I mean, I can't blame nobody else. I can just, if I don't win, it's, it's my fault. And I, this is great. It's a great sport in the world to me. Are you in much better shape this year than you were last? I'm about, I'm about 15, 15 kilos heavier, but um, a lot less body fat. So I feel good, uh, strong, and just not so nervous. I'm more relaxed, and uh, hopefully it's going it's to do well for me. This is the part of KL where you can shop, drink and eat till you drop. Restaurants from every part of the world in all the streets around here. I'm sure you can get fish fingers somewhere, but you'll struggle to get any Fingal's fingers. Five massive rods of iron from 200 to 300 kilograms, that's 440 to 660 pounds, to be lifted up and pushed over as quickly as possible. Everybody's going to get three up and over, most will get four, but it's this guy, the huge fifth one, that's going to sort the men from the boys. Jan Valgier of Iceland. 
And we think he's going to be well suited to this event. He hasn't done it before, but at six feet six inches tall, that will be an advantage over David Warner. But David Warner enjoying himself here in KL, and he'll have a lot of support as well. Needs the points. He's in sixth position at the moment. So here we go. Warner and Valguer up on the chest. It's the Icelander who's just a fraction ahead. The next one weighs 225 kilos. That's near 500 pounds. Well, the grip's so important. The Icelander even further ahead now of David. And as John was saying earlier, everybody we accept will get three. Then it's a real test. Valgir moves on to 275 kilos. Warner still on number three. Valgir. Well, a baptism of fire in his first event, but he's coming on strong here. Now, come on, David. You can do with number four. Easy does it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to go any further than that one. So three by David Warner. Valgir now going for number five. It'll be a great performance if the Icelander can do it. And especially if he can get under a minute. It's going to be close. He's got it. 59.36. And I tell you what, that is going to be hard to beat. That is his best performance so far. That makes you feel better, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I wasn't sure about this event, but I got my craziness up. <laughs> Went a little bit crazy. That's what got me along. I was going to the first two events, bad for me. And then I had to prove myself worthy to be here. So I'm happy. <sighs> Janne Vertonen, as a former champion, has got a lot to prove now. He's alongside Odd Haugen, this amazing 52-year-old. And what a performance by Jean Valguer of Iceland. Five fingers in 59.36. So here we go. As always, we've been saying that height is important. And Janne Vertonen, six feet six inches tall. But Odd Haugen, just a little way behind him. Vertonen is absolutely tearing through the course at the moment. Von Haugen on to number three as well. This one weighs 250 kilograms, way over 550 pounds. This one, another 25 kilos heavier. So Janne Vertonen at last coming to life here in this competition. Von Haugen going well, going up towards 40 seconds now, and Vertonen's got a problem. He's got a real problem here. has got a problem I think with his knee or his hip Odd Haugen gives up at that point he's only got a score of three but the story here is about the former world's strongest man Janne Vertonen of Finland that is severe and I just wonder if it's as bad as it looks whether he's going to take any further part in this competition we could have seen the last of Janne Vertonen and all the other competitors including David Warner, will be watching this very, very closely indeed. We'll keep you updated as soon as we can. There is Zidrunas Savikas alongside Johnny Perry, who's raring to go. Savikas in the grey, Johnny Perry, the multicoloured headband and the shade as well, and Perry in the lead, but only just. It's still John Valgir of Iceland. Five of Fingal's fingers in 59.36. But both men here are on to number three, and it's under 20 seconds. This is phenomenal. Johnny Perry just ahead of Zavikas. Both men driving that pole up. It's about five meters in length. And now onto the giant 300 kilogram one. And Zavikas is catching. This is phenomenal. Can he catch the American? It's neck and neck all the way. This is brilliant stuff. Oh, sort that out. Savikas may have just got it by a whisker. That is fantastic head-to-head -head competition. And that's just what World's Strongest Man needed. But I wonder who won. I don't know. Fantastic race, guys. Who, who won? I haven't heard you. I see that one centimeter I will be quickly, but it's maybe not <laughs> but it, you are, were you watching him or were you just watching your own i don't know maybe a little bit watching him <laughs>
just a tenth of a second in it at the end. Perry taking the six points ahead of Savickas. For David Warner, just one point at the bottom. Vietnam finishing fourth, but a torn thigh muscle forced him to retire. As far as the Englishman's concerned, though, it's a tough old learning curve. What lessons are you learning about the difference in overall quality between domestic competition and world competition? Uh, the standard's amazing. Um, the difference between some of these guys and a lot of the boys who've got back home is phenomenal. Sorry, lads. But uh, I, I did as well as I could do on that. It does definitely suit the taller guy, and I'm just a shaven under six feet in height, so never mind. Hopefully, if I get this far again, I'll be drawn, drawn with some shorter men. <laughs> George Orwell was writing a futuristic novel today, he'd call it not 1984, but 2010, because that's when the most modern city in the world, Putrajaya, will be completed here just outside Kuala Lumpur. A city built from scratch to almost the size of Leeds in less than 15 years. And it's here that we find the next event, the carpool. Two vehicles, each weighing 1,500 kilograms, to be pulled up the hill in a race as quickly as possible towards the brand new spanking presidential palace. And because Vertinen is out, David Warner has to go on his own. Ready. Now then, this is going to be David tough. Fred. I tell you what, if the organisers could have made something more difficult than this, I'd be surprised. The first time we've ever had a carpool uphill. But David Warner is going well. This is much, much better from the Yorkshireman. He's slowing just a little bit. He's got about five and a half metres to go. Now, come on, David. Keep pulling with the arms. Keep driving with the legs. Lean into it. Use your 20 stone of body weight. Three meters to go. He's come to a bit of a grinding halt here. David Warner needs good points. He's just about there. Just over 33 seconds. He hasn't heard the whistle. 33.15. He's going to have to wait and see, but that was a little better from David Warner. I quite enjoyed that. It was hard. Started off really, really easily. And then all of a sudden, gravity takes over and boom. I feel like the hill's going like that, getting steeper and steeper. But no, it's a good event. Um, I hope the people at home appreciate how steep that slope is. <laughs> well, Odd Haugen certainly did. Just 11.65 metres for the veteran, after which a pulled calf muscle ruled him out of the competition. And John Valgeer from Iceland, 32.35 for him. Pretty good. I'm getting there. One day, I'll be here in the final. Well, you're not out of it yet. What? You're not. You're, you're leading this at the moment. Really? Oh, that was a, that's a pleasant surprise. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Take the rope. Well, it certainly looks as though we're looking at the two favourites to go through the final, despite the fact there are still three events Get to go. Savikas on the far side and Johnny Perry. Here we go. Flat out sprinting. Dragging 1,500 kilos, over 3,000 pounds, and look at Johnny Perry go. Down on their marks, just like American footballers in the set position. And this is neck and neck once again, just as it was in Fingal's fingers. So Vikas has just got the edge, he's going to win it. And look at the time, 21-0-1. That is phenomenal once again. And Johnny Perry in close contention. Two great performers. Well, the Monopolies Commission will have to investigate this heat because Savickas and Perry have taken a complete stranglehold on it. First and second place again for the two of them. They're miles clear of the rest. And with Haugen and Vietnam retiring, they're both now into the final. Uh, did you dream of getting to the final? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's my dream, but now my dream, a good start in final. And to win? Uh, see in final. I can't wait. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Definitely great to be one of the top ten in the world. So, looking forward to it. For our next event, we stay in Putrajaya. It's the giant log lift that actually weighs 380 kilograms, but the weight they have to push up is 125.
David Warner, as a former bodybuilder, could do well here. He's got fantastic development. He has massive shoulders and arms. Did pretty well in this competition in what? Britain's Strongest Man. The effective weight bearing down on the shoulders around 19 stone. Just to give you some idea, this is not easy. None of these events are easy. Look at the size of the log behind his head as well. He's going well on six, now seven. A lot to prove in his very first World's Strongest Man competition. And what a setting for the giant log lift. Now he's got 10. This is a good effort by Warner. Drive it up. No, he won't be given that one. He's going to have to go again. Come on, David, you can still do it. Oh, that's it. But a good effort by the Knaresborough man, David Warner, applauding himself and enjoying himself in this heat of Kuala Lumpur. Not bad. No, well, it's the same one we did at the Britons. I did one more rep. So at least I've got better at something this year. <laughs> And Warner was still leading after the Icelander went. John Valgeer managing eight repetitions. Here set. goes Savikas. Lithuania's pride and joy in this World's one. Strongest Man competition. One. That was one very easy. Two, a bit lower. A little bit lower Four, there, two, Dougie Edmonds two, said. And he hasn't given him that three. one. So he lost a repetition. Four. That could be crucial. And remembering, Five. of course, that Johnny Perry is yet to go. Six. I must admit, when I saw Seven. the lineup of all the events, I was wondering whether Eight. Savikas would be any good at this. He's a good power Eight. lifter, but that doesn't involve any Eight. lifting overhead. But now he's drawn level with David Warner and gone ahead of him. So the Briton in second place at the moment. Savikas going for number 13, and he's got it. Savikas now 14 repetitions. That will put the pressure on the American. A little smile from the Lithuanian. The giant log lift lifted 14 times by a man with arms like tree trunks as well. Terrific effort. Well, if you wanted further proof that these two in this heat were inseparable, Johnny Perry also managed 14 repetitions, which meant the two of them had to share the points, 5.5 apiece. A good performance by David Warner there, but he was with the also-rans as Perry and Zavikas continued their relentless march to the final. And so beneath the Petronas Towers, the world's tallest buildings, the world's most famous strongman event, the Atlas Stones. Could they separate these two men of steel? This final pairing is so intriguing. Perry with the headband and Savikas. Each of them has two single victories and a first equal in this heat. So the psychological edge for both of them going through to the final, if they can win this one, well, who knows, it could be decisive. But let's just sit back and enjoy it. Perry, the giant American. Savikas, the rock-hard Lithuanian. Johnny Perry, six feet, six inches tall. Hoist that stone onto his shoulder so easily. Savikas about a second or two behind the American at the moment. But Johnny Perry is holding nothing back. He's safely through to the final, but he wants this one as well, just to put Mr. Savikas in his place. High on the chest, roll it over. That is number four. Now for the 160 kilogram stone. Savikas has got number four, so he's going for the big one as well. Johnny Perry, can he get his arms round it? That is tremendous. And now we know that this fella is a real contender for the final. He's going to be joined by Lithuania's powerlifting champion, Savikas. The two of them have been fantastic competitors during this heat, way better than anybody else. Well, Johnny Perry, five stones in 41.84, putting down a marker for the final. There's confirmation of his and Zavikas' complete domination of this heat. And there is the lineup for the final of the Metrex Trophy for the world's strongest man. Eight men from Europe, two from North America. Johnny, many congratulations on getting to the final. You'll be immensely proud to fly the Stars and Stripes there, I know. And a lot of people think you might be a serious contender. I tell you what, though, I've been out of Chinatown and I've picked John, up some amazing... there.
better place than in the shadow of the world's tallest building for the final act in our annual quest for you know what. The Metrex Trophy for the World's Strongest Man to be won this year in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. A city enjoying a huge economic boom, the ultimate symbols of which are the Petronas Towers, 88 storeys high, reaching 452 metres into the sky. A triumph of vision and engineering. But we're concerned about something far more basic, raw power. For years, this event has been a Scandinavian monopoly, but for the first time in a decade, that stranglehold could be broken. After qualifying events around the globe and here in Kuala Lumpur, we're left with just 10 men. From Finland, Juha Mati Rasanen. From Lithuania, Zdrunas Zavikas. From Poland, Marius Puzinowski. Also from Poland, Jarek Dimik. From Latvia, Raymond Bergmanis. From the USA, Johnny Perry. From Great Britain, Gregor Edmonds. From Canada, Hugo Girard, from Sweden, Magnus Samuelsson, and the defending champion from Norway, Svent Carlsen. This will be the most competitive final in memory. Jidruna Savitas from Lithuania, 27 year old, 1 meter 90, 145 kilograms. Magnus Samuelsson, Sweden, 32 years old, 2 meters tall, 150 kilos. Greg Redmond, Scotland, 25 years of age, 194 centimeters tall, 120 kilos. Raymond Bergmanis from Latvia, age 36, height 1 meters 92, 139 kilos. Johan Vatkirjasanen from Finland, age 28, height 1 meter 98, 132 kilos. I am Jaroslav Dimek from Poland. 31 years old, 1 meter 82, 120 kilos. I'm Hugo Gerard from Canada, 30 years old, 1 meter 83, 150 kilos. Marius Pujanowski from Poland, 25 years old, 1 meter 86, 130 kilograms. Johnny P, North Carolina, USA, 29 years old. Six foot six, 175 kilos. Sven Carlson from Norway. I'm 35 years old, weighing 141 kilo, and I'm 188 tall. And I am the world's strongest man. Viking power! I am world's strongest man, as I say, for now, and they have to prove me wrong. But uh, as it goes for today with the first two events, I just hope uh, if I get more than 14 points today, it's okay. And that's. Uh, according to schedule. Who do you think are your main rivals this year? Uh, if you look at the events by itself, uh, it would be Hugo and Marius, I guess. And of course, you can never leave out the Swede. Uh, we had so many fights during the last years, and uh, he still haven't been able to beat me in this competition. So. And we begin in Medeca Square, the spiritual home of Malaysia's colonial past. And there's no question here of bowling the guys a couple of looseners to let them get their eyes in. We're hitting them with a big one from the word go, the flip and drag. 
this huge tyre, 385 kilograms, 860 pounds, to be flipped to the halfway point where it's then left, and this mighty anchor, which could have come off the Ark Royal, 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, then has to be dragged to the end of the course. This really is a leg, arm and lung busting start. Commentary on the final of the world's strongest man from Paul Dickinson. What a lineup it is for this year's final. The first heat of the flip and drag being led out by Zidrinus Savikas of Lithuania. In his own right, a world champion in the sport of powerlifting. Next to him, the very tall Juha Rasanen of Finland. A lot of nerves out here this morning. The temperature rising all the time. Lithuania, Zidrinus Savikas has got a lot to prove. Over 20 stones in body weight, a massive man. Juha Rasanen continuing the great tradition of Finnish strongmen in this final. Next to him, a former champion, Magnus Samuelsson, two meters tall, looking bigger and bigger every year he competes. And another big man, they're all big, let's face it. Hugo Girard with the biggest chest I've ever seen. Close to 70 inches, won his heat easily. And finally, the lightest man in this year's final, Jarek Dimek of Poland. Second in Europe's strongest man competition this year. Our first five in the flip and drag, and that giant tyre is bound to be a huge obstacle to all of them. They have to flip it four times, then race on for the huge anchor and chain. This year's final underway, Dimek away well, Girard away well, Samuelson not away too well. On the far side, Savikas is going pretty well too. There he is. Gaining an experience all the time. This is neck and neck. Savikas came through strongly. Dimek as well. And now this giant anchor and chain. Over 300 kilograms in weight. Dimek is flying. This is amazing. Savikas in second place, but moving ahead. Samuelson coming through strongly. Demek has come to a grinding halt. Savikas glancing across at the tall Swede in the yellow. Now, who's going to get it? This is going to be so, so close. Oh, Samuelson's gone down, and that is fantastic. Savikas has finished. Samuelson, about half a metre to go, he finishes second. What a start for the Lithuanian. What a start to this final. There's still 15 seconds left on the clock. Demek has only got about half a metre left. Hugo Girard trying to finish ahead of the pole, but he won't. Rasanen has walked off the course already. Zavikas, though, will be watching the clock to see what his time was. Another five great athletes to go yet. Hugo Girard absolutely down and out. What a start. Do you think uh, in the next race they can beat you? <sighs> Uh, I hope they can't, but see. Well, uh, the, the anchor, the pull, was well, very hard? Very hard. After tire flip, it's very hard work. Latvian Raymond Bogmanis in lane one. Three in times he's competed one. in Olympic, Olympic weightlifting. <laughs> Looking very, very confident during the heats. Next to him, the giant figure of Johnny Perry, one of the heaviest men in this year's final. Quietly confident, one suspects. Mariusz Kuczynowski of Poland. He's not big, but boy, is he muscular. Superhuman efforts in the heat. This, the defending champion, Sven Carlson. He won the title in Zambia. Can he do it all over again here in Kuala Lumpur? And what a moment for young Gregor Edmonds, representing Scotland and Great Britain. Second in Britain's Strongest Man, but now in his very first final. Hands on tire. Douglas Edmonds, the referee, gets everybody ready. The time to beat, 46.55 by Zidruna Savikas. Away we go, Sven Carlson in pursuit of a second title. Gregor Edmonds flipping it over. One more to go for this man. What a start in the defence of his title by the Norwegian. Kuzinovsky is there. So is Johnny Perry and so is Gregor Edmonds. But look at Kuzinovsky coming through. Sven Carlsen is fading. Greg 
Oscar Edmonds is going like a train. Fantastic for the Scot, but the pole is going to win this, surely. Oh, that is brilliant. Just a little slip there, but that is the fastest time. Now, come on, Gregor, keep going. 46.55 by Zavikas. He's blown that, but if he can just keep going, and what a turnaround in form for Sven Carlsen. So fast after the tyre. Now, come on, Gregor, you've got to finish. Time is ticking away towards a minute. It's still a good start for the Scot. He's finished now. Well done, Gregor Edmonds. Puzhanovsky was absolutely incredible. Only five seconds left before they blow the whistle. Sven Carlsen fading badly in this event. That is it. Well done to Gregor Edmonds. And Puzhanovsky has won that by a mile. Oh, Gregor, what a start for you, son. But the Poles have certainly found a new star in Marius Puzhanovsky. He grimaces, he's breathing hard, but that was such a superb effort and maximum points to Poland. Happy? Yes. Uh, only first events. Maybe next. Very good. Maybe. But you were very quick there. The, uh, the drag of the anchor was easy. <laughs> I don't know, only training. Very good training, flip and drag, no problem. Not bad start, eh? <laughs> Great. You beat the world's strongest man. Uh, not yet, I'm not. No, no, you beat, <laughs> no, you beat the world's strongest man. Yeah, he's got many good events to come, though. The running races are good for me. Where do you see static events? You see Sven come to life. Sven, that looked like it hurt a bit. Oh, yeah, really bad. It was so easy, but the chain was just stuck to the ground today. But it's just one event, six to go. Not so much Viking power at the moment, though. No, not now, but I will be back later. Soon to come near, an event near you. Well, the pre-competition favourites, Gerard and Carlson, back in sixth and seventh. A good start for Gregor Edmonds, but all eyes on the pole. Puzhanovsky. Event two, the farmer's walk. Carry these two giant anvils, 120 kilograms each, that's 265 pounds, down the course, back, and again, 75 meters in total. That's longer than any previous event in World's Strongest Man. And the winner, obviously, is the guy who gets there first. Magnus Samuelson, you're one of the favorites for this event. What are the key elements here in being successful? First, you make sure you have a perfect grip. And what I do, I, I put my, my, as, as much of my fingers around the grip as I can. Then I squeeze my thumb around my fingers to make sure that it stays in this position. You pick up uh, the, the, the anvils and try to hold them as much as you can apart. You start off with uh, small strides and then with a pretty high speed, then you just make the strides longer and longer and just try to keep your head up the whole time. Take your you go, Gerard, nearest the camera. There's Yarek Dimek wearing the green shirt. And it sounds simple when Magnus Samuelsson describes the grip, but you, when your shoulders are being torn out of their sockets, by the weight which equates to a small motorcycle in each arm, that is unbelievable. Girard of Canada, Canada's strongest man for many years now, just in the lead, there's only a couple of metres between them. Girard is going well, one more turn, then 25 metres, and this is a real sprint. Oh, Girard's down, so is Demek though. So Girard let off the hook there just a little bit. Look at the strain on Gerard's face and the grip's gone again. This could be a case of the tortoise and the head. Dumex coming on stronger. He's almost being stretched to the ground. Look at his arms and his shoulders sloping forward. He's only about four metres from the end and Gerard's gone down again. Oh, what a drama. Dumex got it. I can't believe it. Fantastic performance by both men. Yarek Dumex. 54.34, he's in the lead. A little bit tired. That was a good race, yes? I think so. My strategy, strategy was not too fast, but to end. It's okay. 
Remens Bigmanis on the far side, the Latvian up against Ready. Sven Carlson, the champion from last year. And these early stages of the final, so crucial to make sure you've got solid performances. And both men are going well. Sven Carlson turning just ahead of Bugmanis. And remember that time by Demek, 54-34. That's what they, everybody has to try and beat. The grip is crucial here. No man has dropped it so far. He's just wobbling a bit. Is the champion. And look at Bergmanis. Oh, he's gone as well. Shades of the previous pairing. It's hurting like hell out there. And Bergmanis almost toppled over. Carson coming through now. Can they beat the time? Bergmanis is going to finish. No, he's not. There's a metre to go. The Lapian's done it. He goes into the lead. Tremendous performance by Bergmanis. He's actually beaten the time of Demek by four seconds, and Carlson is all over the place. He's still got three metres left, way outside the time set, and that is it as far as the defending champion is concerned. Whoa, he's just broken the world record for throwing his belt into the crowd as well. A lot of passion out there, but at the moment, Bergmanis is the man. Gregor Edmonds found the going tough. He couldn't complete the course managing just 33 metres. Johnny Perry of the USA did go the distance, 53.62 for him. But an immense performance by the huge Finn, completing the course in 40.07 seconds. It was after that that disaster struck for the former world's strongest man, Magnus Samuelsson. Obviously in considerable pain, he couldn't lift the anvils for a second time and couldn't complete the course. Was it a recurrence of that previous injury? Is the bicep gone? No. It's my good one. Put a bit off. Just one pair to go on the far side, Savikas and Puzhanovsky of Poland in the Hooray! orange vest. Great time by Juha Rasinen, just over 40 seconds. And puzhanovsky has gone off like a train. Look at the muscles in that guy's neck and his arms and everywhere else if it comes to that. Zavikas is going well too. Uh, this guy is actually running. This is unbelievable. It's more like a sprint, a little touchdown. The clock is only just over 22 seconds. I swear to goodness, he hasn't breathed. A little touchdown there, but straight up. Now, come on. This could be a phenomenal time. It's just over 33 seconds. That is simply unbelievable. He wants to know what the time is. Savika's still out on the course. He's got a chance of coming third, which he does. But what about the leader, Puzhanovsky? Oh, I've never seen anything what? like it. Yes, sir. And again, he is so, so fit, he hardly breaks sweat. Congratulations. It was a good race, yes? Thanks. I'm happy. Uh, second event. First, it's very good. Oh, it's very strong events. Oh. And you were first and now third, so you're happy too? Yeah. It's my favorite event. It's not so happy, but good start today. But what of Samuelson? Perhaps the most recognizable face in the world of strongman had the former champion's challenge ended for another year. As I turned the last time, my leg kicked into one of the cylinders and uh, that overstretched my, my left bicep. And then as, when I picked him up again, uh, like the pain just get worse and worse by the second. I was holding on to them, so in the end I, I just walked away from it. He walked away with just two points at the bottom there, as you can see. Another victory for Puzhanovsky ahead of Rasinen and Savikas. And is this the changing of the guard? Hugo Girard in seventh place, and amazingly, Sven Carlsen in ninth. I learned something, you know, strange thing happens in this competition, so at least I'm going to come back tomorrow 200% and fight for my right again to be world strongest man. Because nothing is over before the fat lady sings, and I haven't seen her yet, so... So who is Marius Puzhanovsky, a 24-year-old former top amateur boxer who recently has had more than his fair share of problems. 
I started boxing when I was 15. After seven years I was quite good, and in 2000 I was training for the Olympic squad. I liked boxing, but I didn't like being punched, so I took up strongman. Last year I had a car accident and someone was badly hurt. It was my fault, I went to prison. Inside there were good people and some bad people. They wanted to humiliate me, now I have the chance to show them. I am very determined, and when I was released I had four months to prepare. No disco, no play, just training and more training. After two months I became European champion, and now everything is possible. So to the third event, the squat lift. Last year in Africa it was a safari truck. This year in Kuala Lumpur it's six huge tyres that weigh 275 kilograms, that's 600 pounds, that have to be squatted all the way down and then all the way up again as often as possible. And obviously after the first two events, Marius Pujanowski of Poland's won both. So a question for Jamie Reeves, former world's strongest man himself. How do you assess this extraordinary man? Um, well, he's got off to a very good start. But these first two events have been, one's been dragging heavy weights, one's been moving with weights. So they've both been mobility events. The squat's a classic weightlifting, powerlifting event. And it's just basically about being static and seeing how much strength you've got in your legs and back. And although he's had a fabulous start and he's doing well, I think this will be the acid test. This will see what he's really made of. And I think it'll make or break his attempt at winning the world's strongest man. Johnny Perry from the United States. Amazingly, he said he slimmed down this year, so his arms only measure 24 inches around. But it's legs that count here, legs and back. 275 kilos, over 600 pounds, squatted as many times as possible. Squat! The judges paying careful attention to how far down they go as well. Little touch, and away we go, that's his first. Breathing so important. Breathe in. Big squat. And breathe out. That's three. Well, certainly Johnny Perry weighed in at about 26, 27 stone last year. He's a little bit lighter now. And he says a little fitter too. You heard what Jamie Reeves had to say. This could sort the men out from the boys. This is solid strength. Looks to be actually getting a little easier for Perry. He's getting into his rhythm, but taking a long time in between each squat. He's been going for well over 40 seconds now, so a bit of endurance kicking in as well. Deep breath, somebody is shouting in the crowd. You've got to get oxygen to those muscles as fast as you can in between each lift. That's eight. This is a good effort by the American. Former professional wrestler, super strong man, nine, and I think he's had enough, but that is a good target for the rest to go for. Johnny Perry scores nine squats. Now he can get away into the shade and have a rest, but there's still some good guys to come. But it looked like every ounce of power you had left was going into that last one. Yeah, every ounce of power I had left. I probably borrowed some from you and a little bit of everybody here, so uh, I just had to get it off on me, so I had to come up. It was killing me. So uh, I'm pleased with it so far. I was expecting six. I was hoping six. Now it was good, so I'm pleased. Well, Yarek Dimmick found it impossible to lift the tyres once. No repetitions, no points. Magnus Samuelsson did continue because this wasn't an arm event, but he managed just one repetition, as did Gregor Edmonds. He just didn't have enough leg power to get it up for a second time. Rassanen from Finland, he managed three repetitions. After him, Raymond's Bergmanis, three times an Olympic weightlifter. He managed six. This really was hard. Hugo Girard, though, made it look easy. Twelve repetitions for the Canadian. After him, it was time for some Viking power. Representing so Sven Carlson, amazingly, Carlson. down in ninth place after the first two events. 
But this, I feel, is a banker for him. He's always performed well in the squat lifts in previous competitions. And so he should. He's a former European powerlifting champion. Lift. 12 lifts by Hugo squat. Girard is the target. And notice how far down yeah. his back that bar is. That's good powerlifting technique. And Three. this is a good rhythmical start. Three. He's got knee wraps on. He's got a very tight Four. super suit on underneath that T-shirt. And five looking good for the Norwegian. Six. Very wide stance. Seven. So, so strong, Sven Carlsen. And totally Three. under control at the moment. Now, can he go past Three. nine reps, which is Johnny Perry? Yes, he can. Now chasing the leader. One more to go. He's equaled him. And that is the lead. Just what the Norwegian wanted. Just what the crowd wanted as well. 14 lifts. Any more? No, that is it. But Sven Carlsen has set a prodigious total. Eases out. And that bar digging in across the shoulders. Sven Carlsen now knows he's got a good total up there. They say it's a little bit heavier than last year and need four more, so hope it's enough. Just have to pray, because I really need it now. What he needed was for Zavikas and Prizhanovski to fall well short of that total. And the Lithuanian really struggled. He managed just six repetitions. Take your position. Well, we heard what Jamie Reeves said right at the beginning of this event. Are this would test Marius Puzhanovsky to the limit. Squat. He's a tremendous all-round strength athlete, but nobody is sure about Work. his squatting ability. And what a total has been set by Sven Carlsen. The overall leader goes to two, but he's looking a little bit unsure, a little bit unsteady. Just adjusting his footwork there. This is a tricky event. Kuzhanovsky, that's four. This is not looking good for the pole. And when you consider that Girard has done 12, Johnny Perry's on nine, and a couple of other guys on six reps, this could be poor points for Puzhanovsky. The third event in the final, that is it. And at last we've seen a weakness in Puzhanovsky's armory. He's not unbeatable after all. The return of the old guard, Carlson and Girard taking first and second place, although this was the point when Magnus Samuelsson did call it quits because of that injury. Puzhanovsky and Zvikas still out ahead, but for Hugo Girard, so close on so many occasions, he's still right in there. you got to go all the way. It's three events now, five, uh, four more to go. So I just got to look forward, and that's the way to look at it. It's not a sprint, that's a marathon, and it's not over until the last event is done. So. Uh, Right now I'm happy with it, now I'm looking forward for the next one. If I can grab uh, some more point there, then uh, back on track. Well, we stay in downtown KL for our next event, one of the most familiar and traditional of all strong men competitions, the lorry pull. So Sven, how much is pulling a lorry technique and how much is its strength? I'll put it that way, if you don't do it the right way, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get it to the finish line. So what's the right way? I to try to, to use a lot of arm power with the rope, stay low as possible and get as much speed in the feet as possible. As soon as you get it rolling, it's going to become easier and easier as long as you can keep the momentum up. It's a power event, but if you do it the wrong way, you're going to have a hard time. Bin Tang Walk in central Kuala Lumpur, about to witness something that I don't think anybody's seen here before. This giant lorry's got to be pulled over the 30-metre course, and the first guy up, Gregor ready? Edmonds of Scotland and Great Britain. Get I just wonder how much longer Gregor is going to continue his strongman competition. He said he wants to go back to track and field and Highland Games, but he's absolutely delighted to be in this final. And so is dad, referee Douglas Edmonds, who sent him on his way. There's a slight incline as we get towards the end. That is when everybody is going to feel the pain, the anguish, and everything else that goes along with this type of event. Fitness so important. 
It's not a sprint. It's not an 800-meter race. It's somewhere in between. And the agony of the lactic acid kicking into the legs and arms around about here has got to be overcome by sheer willpower and guts and determination. Greg is over the line, but the lorry has to be over the line as well. Another meter should do it. Come on, Greg. He's come to a grinding halt. Now, this is anguish at its worst. He just can't shift it. He's only got about six or seven inches to go. He's outside 60 seconds now, and there's Haney Koivunemi, his girlfriend. She finished second in World's Strongest Woman last year. We'll see her in this year's competition, and I don't think Gregor can believe the pain he suffered in the last meter of that competition. Unbelievable. Are you, all, are you, are you reasonably happy with that? <laughs> when I know where I am, they'll be able to think about it. I don't know, John. Tell us how tough that was then. It was actually easier than I thought it would be. But it was a long, it's a long pull. Normally we don't pull 25 metres normally, 30, so I wasn't expecting that last little bit. It was just a bit too far for Rassenen as well. 27.4 metres for the Finn. Raymond's Bergmanis did complete the course though. 64.56 for the man from Latvia. Next up, it was Jarek Dimmick and 52.03 for the pole. And they kept getting quicker and quicker. Johnny Perry, biceps bulging, tattoos pumping, made it in 46.21. What was the hardest part about that? The hardest part, pulling the truck. The last 50 feet was terrible. Well, everybody agrees the last part of this contest is the Are worst. Now, Sven Carlson made a quantum leap up the scoreboard in the last event from ninth to fourth. Can he do it again? He's got to do it again if he's going to retain his title. Here we go. That lorry is not exactly thundering down the course, but it is moving smoothly. And this guy's done this competition so many times. Boats, planes, you name it, he's done it. And this is quick, 46.21, the leading time at the moment by Johnny Perry. Right at the beginning of this competition, you heard him say, you've got to pull with the arms, you've got to drive with the legs, you've got to stay low. And so far, so good for the Norwegian. Short, sharp steps. Coming up to 40 seconds, not very far to go, just a couple of metres, this is quick. And, oh, he's got it, yes he has. Just by 0.21 of a second, Sven Carlsen goes into the lead, but there are three competitors to go. For the time being, so far, so good for Carlsen. Into the lead. Happy with that? What's the lead? Lead, yes. I'm leading. You're leading. Yes! yes! First! Yeah. Yeah. Yes! There's still life in you yet. Oh yeah. Viking power! That certainly was a great right. performance by Sven Carlson. Amazed to find himself in the lead. Next up, Hugo Girardo, Canada. Just a little bit upright in comparison to the Norwegian. 46 seconds is the target now. Look how wide this guy's shoulders are. He almost blanks out the truck when you look at him from the front. Massive arms, bigger than most people's legs. The short, sharp steps are working again. All the competitors have got this technique taped now. Hugo Girard, solid as a rock. The last bit of the course though, the last 10 meters is definitely the hardest. Coming up to five meters to go. He's got about 10 seconds in the back. Can he keep it going? Oh, I think he might be. This is good from Girard. He's going to go into the lead, surely. Yes, he is. 44.84. And in actual fact, Carlson's time has been utterly destroyed. That is going to be hard to beat. There's his wife. Delight for the Canadian camp. And Hugo Girard is in the lead. Two more to go. Hopefully that'll be a winning time. I went out there, didn't bother about time, distance, 
chest pull until it stop. You're pretty proud with that, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes. A big smile on the face ready? of Hugo Girard as Zidrunas Savikas, the it's penultimate right. competitor, gets ready, leans into it. Now, this guy is a powerlifter, is used to shifting huge weights in the gym and in World's Strongest Man. But I bet he's never encountered anything like this before. In terms of body weight, slightly lighter than the Canadian, but we've already seen what a good competitor he is. He's lying in second place overall behind Pujanovsky. And that truck is moving, I can tell you. So Vikas is going well. The legs pumping, the arms pulling like crazy. Now he's got to grit his teeth. Three metres to go. Two metres to go. This is going to be so, so close. 44.84 to beat. And he's done it. This is just getting better and better. Faster and faster. Being held up there by Jamie Reeves. 43.97 seconds. We have a new leader. Fantastic. Congratulations. You're the leader. Thanks. Very happy. I like this event. Do you think Marius can beat your time? He can beat, but after two minutes we see. We certainly will. Well, there aren't too many people in the world who can boast at being 20 stone in body weight with hardly an ounce of fat on them, but this guy can. A little slip there. Marius is away. Chasing the time of 43.97 by Savikas. Look at the arms working, the legs driving, taking slightly longer steps than everybody else. And the size of his biceps have got to be seen to be believed. Absolutely massive upper body strength. And he's going like a train. The last three competitors, well, we've seen a new leader virtually every time out. Now, can he do it? He's wobbling a bit at the moment. He's got to stay in a straight line. Three metres to go. It's going to be so close again. And Zavikas is still in the lead. Pujanovsky goes into second. He's about half a second down, 44.38. But he's still up there. He's just realised he's got second place. What I know is that I give everything I have. I did my best and I'm coming second. This is good. I'm very happy with my time. So just how crucial would the lorry pull prove to be in determining the final outcome? Savikas and Pujanovsky re-establishing their superiority. Girard and Carlson now eight and ten points respectively behind the leader after what had been one of their favoured events. Something old, something new. The new is the venue, Putrajaya, the new administrative capital of Malaysia, which when it's completed in 2010, will have cost $10 billion to build, housing half a million people. And the old is our old friend here. In previous incarnations, the Africa Stone and the Dragon Stone of Wales, but now reincarnated as the Asia Stone. 175 kilograms, that's two of me, to be picked up and carried as far as possible up and down a 50 meter course. Now the world record for this is 107.5 five meters. Can anybody in the field today eclipse that? Well, we'll soon find hey, out bro. because Greg Redmonds is the first to go. The shield weighing in, as John was saying, 175 kilos, close to 400 pounds. It's around about the size of a 500 cc motorbike. But I've got a sneaking suspicion he's going to do pretty well at this one. He's got long, long arms and providing the grip is solid, and that's so important, and he keeps the shield high on the chest, who knows what he could do. 50 metres, the first target. Jamie Reeves, former world's strongest man from Sheffield, just keeping an eye on Gregor for safety's sake. Just one line to go over, a little touch, and away we go again. Looking solid, over 50 metres now for Gregor. No pressure going first, that may help him. He's just managing to peer over the top of that shield. In comes Jamie Reeves again. And now once fatigue starts, that's when it could get tricky. But that grip is utterly rock solid now. He's coming up to 100 metres. The world record John was talking about, the best we've ever seen, around about 107 metres. 
And Gregory is still going. His father in the background watching anxiously. Down it goes at around 107 metres. That is a good performance by Gregor. Well done. You went into that in very positive mood, didn't you? <laughs> oh, well, he was hiding it well then. Legs were like jelly from top pool yesterday. I think it could have went a lot further if it was fresher, but I did good doing that thing. The official measurement gives us 107.5 for Gregor. That equals the best we've ever seen with this piece of equipment. So now it's Juha Rasanen being helped there by Yuka Ahola. Both great fins. Ahola, of course, twice world's strongest man. And away Rasanen goes. Taller than Gregor Edmonds, slightly bigger in the chest as well. And like Edmonds, the grip absolutely rock solid. My goodness, he's really trotting down the course. The first 50 metres, well, he's just catching his breath now, just getting warmed up. I wonder if this could be another 100 metre run. The Shield Walk, a great favourite in World's Strongest Man for many, many years. Going back to the Husevel Stone that we saw in Iceland over a decade ago. Rasanen is going well. If he turns and goes 10 metres, he's going to beat Gregor Edmonds. So here he goes. Oh, this is great stuff from the Finn again. He's closing in on Gregor Edmonds' marker and he's gone past it. He's got another couple of metres before it crashes to the ground. 112.35. Well, well, well. This is getting better and better, this event. When you got to the second turn, how much further did you think you could go? Maybe 10 metres. It's about very easy. Though, you know, almost 90 metres, but then it's a little bit slower and slower. Now no, I'm happy. I hope nobody can beat me. Two superhuman efforts, followed by a third, Bergmanis, just getting ahead of Gregor Edmonds' total. Yarek Dimmick, human in comparison, 70.35 metres. He was followed by Johnny Perry, 81.9 for the giant American. Sven Carlson now. The Scandinavian strongmen have got a great tradition in any event involving lifting and walking long distances. And he's gone off at a pretty fast pace. And Carlson needs big points. He's been disappointing so far in this final. He really is striding out. It's still very hot in Kuala Lumpur. It's a bit misty today, but the searing heat is going to take its toll eventually. Being cheered on by the crowd. Everybody knows what a great competitor Sven Carlsen is. But with three guys over 100 metres already, this competition is of such a high standard. And Carlsen is faltering. He's taking a breather, and this has never been good tactics in the past. We've seen that. It's so hard to get the momentum going once you stop. And he's struggling. He's down around the 79-metre mark. And once again, the defending champion has got a real problem. That is not good points for the Norwegian. And worse still for his great rival, the Canadian. Girard's challenge all but ending at the 68-metre mark. And when Zavikas let the stone go after 81 metres, the door was well and truly open for Pujanovsky. Well, this guy has been a revelation. We didn't know too much about him. He didn't appear in World's Strongest Man last year, but obviously his training has been going incredibly well. The hands clasped in front of him. Wrapped across his chest, that giant stone weighing in at almost 400 pounds. And one can only imagine just what it feels like when it's digging in the arms, especially after about 100 metres or so. So the leader at the moment, still Juha Rasanen of Finland, 112.35. But Gregor Edmonds, he's in third place at 107.5. But Pujanovsky has been a revelation. I don't know who he's talking to in the crowd there, but he wants more cheers, that's for sure. These guys are not just strong. They love the crowd to support them as well. It really does help. He's got the stage all to himself, and now he's going for victory again. Oh, this is so, so easy. He's gone into the lead, and he's almost halfway up the course. I'm not sure he's smiling, 
It's half of a smile, half a grimace, and that is it. Thank you very much. Another victory, maximum points, and Poland are very, very definitely in the lead. Another super performance by Marius. There's no stopping this guy. Superb, and he looks so cool, calm and collected. Thank you very much and goodbye. 127.4 meters, and he made it look easy. It is true that in this event I am very strong and the stone is not a problem to me. It is easy for me to carry such a weight and so I am smiling. It was not feeling heavy. And he was smiling even more when he saw the scoreboard. Ten points again for the pole. And when you see that Svent Carlsen finished seventh there and that Puzhanovsky now has a five and a half point lead at the top, you realize there's going to be no repeat success for the huge Norwegian. Is that the end? That's the end of this battle, yeah. But we'll still come back next year, try to do better. But it wasn't mine to win this year, that's for sure. At least I'm going to try to finish off like a Viking warrior and maybe even finish in the top three. That battle isn't over yet. Beneath the Petronas Towers, the world's tallest building, the outcome for the battle of the world's strongest man will be decided. Two events to go. The first is the deadlift. How many times can you lift the car off the ground? Juha Rasanen, the first we're going to see in the deadlift. And this another great favourite in World's Strongest Man finals. I just Ready. wonder whether his height Lift. of almost two metres is going to be a disadvantage. But Good. the Finns are renowned for having Lift. incredibly strong backs. He's Good. almost got straight legs there. Lift. 320 Three. kilos, over 700 Lift. pounds. Four. Look at the bulging Lift. biceps. Keeping his arms straight so that all the strain is taken on the shoulders, the back and the legs as well. Just a little lockout with the legs. But six reps is a good start for Rassanen. The tradition of Scandinavian competitors over the years has been unmatched by any other group of nations. Uh, Rassanen needs good points here though to get in amongst them. Ten seconds to go on the clock. That is nine repetitions. I'm not sure he's got time to do another one. No, he hasn't. He couldn't do it anyway. But nine repetitions for Juha Rasanen. Tremendous performance by the Finn, and that is going to be hard to beat. It's very close for third place at the moment. Yeah, that's why. Are you happy? I'm happy when, if I win this event. Not if I, do, if I win, I'm second. Well, because Bergmanus is an Olympic weightlifter of great renown, I think his technique will probably be the best of anybody. And that looked easy. This is a guy who's competed in three Olympic Games in the clean and jerk and the snatch. And so this is his bread and butter, lifting heavyweights off the ground. Up to five. Looking very comfortable indeed. And if anybody is watching who's a weightlifter, or an aspiring champion, this is perfect technique. Straight back, head up, arms straight. Now, can he match Rassanen? Yes, he can. He's got time to do a couple more. And this is a fabulous performance by Bergmanis. He's been in the final before, but I'm not sure he's ever been as high up the table as this. And this will do his chances of taking big points. The power of good. One more for Bergmanis. No, that is it, but he scores 11. Fabulous stuff by the Latvian. That was his event. He needed the points, and I think he's going to get them. This next event is stone. is much better for other guys. If I step far in this event for other guys, I have a chance. If I, he beat me in this event, I don't have a chance. By this stage, Hugo Girard was a shadow of his former self. Six repetitions for the Canadian. But everybody was still trying. Johnny Perry, look at the effort there. Eight from him. And even Carlson, he'd given up his crown, but he was fighting every inch of the way. 
So Vickers Three. now in the deadlift. First. We're talking before about Bergmanis being a banker for him this event. One. This guy's a silver medalist One. in World Championship powerlifting. And this Two. is an exercise One. in powerlifting competition, the deadlift. This is the only man that can Two. catch Marius Pujanowski, the pole who's leading overall. Two. He's got to get a cracking score here. He's got to go in excess of 11, surely. This is rock steady from Zavikas. Seven. Four more required to match Bergmanis. And this competition has been hot all the way through the final. But now it's really building up to be a classic finish in World's Strongest Man. And he's just juggling that bar up his knees. And that is it. He's happy with nine, with only Pujanovsky to go. And that makes him equal second with Rassanen. Nine is second place. Yeah, it's good. Do you think Marius can beat that? I think no. He not need it. Because he better in stones. But maybe... Well, before this event, Marius Pujanowski of Poland Ready. was five and a half Lift. points ahead of Savikas in second place. Down. So it would have to be a terrible Lift. performance here to go into the last Down. event needing to win. Lift. But look at this guy's muscles. Oh, he's Lift. absolutely exploding with muscle. Down. I've never seen a strong Lift. man so defined in all my days. Down. He's not looking Lift. too comfortable, but this is solid stuff from Pujanovsky. That is six. Pujanovsky is not giving up. It's not fast. It's not pretty, but it is effective. There's no smiling this time from the pole, but he wants at least another couple more reps to keep the pressure on everybody else and go into the Atlas Stones, the final event, with a bit of a cushion. This is fantastic determination by Marius Pujanovsky. He's not exactly the new kid on the block, but what a sensation he's been here in this final. That is it. Eight repetitions will have to be enough, but is it enough to bring him the title of World's Strongest Man? We'll know very, very soon. Pujanovsky on the brink of glory. For Raymond's Bergmanis, a crucial victory in the deadlift because there are two battles going on now as we have just one event to go. Who will be champion, Pujanovsky or Savikas? And who will be third? Four men still in with a chance. If you're going to win the title of World's Strongest Man, this is how you want to do it. In the very last event, in the archetypal strongman event of the Atlas Stones that dates back hundreds of years. You know all about the stones, the five going up to 165 kilograms to be placed on the wall. But as if that wasn't a big enough of a challenge, the heat at the moment is almost unbearable. I am pouring sweat at the moment, and I'm just telling you about it. One of those men fighting for third place, Johnny Perry, staked his claim early on. A fantastic effort, five stones in 43.86. Well, if either Rassanen or Bergmanis want to get on the rostrum, they know precisely what it is yeah, they have right. to do. Five stones as fast as possible. There's no other way to do it. And Bergmanis may be heading for his best ever finish in World's Strongest Man, Rassanen has competed so well over the last few days, but Bergmanis setting the pace. He wants this and he wants it badly. There's money, there's a trophy, and there's a tremendous amount of pride and a big reputation at stake here. Rassanen very definitely behind the Latvian. Bergmanis on number four. Now the big 160 kilogram ball. This is for a place on the rostrum, albeit in third place, surely behind Zavikas and Pujanovsky, but Raymond Bergmanis has done it. His best ever finish in a World's Strongest Man final. I'm absolutely delighted for the Latvian. He's 36 years old. Rassanen is disgusted with himself, but look at the smile on Bergmanis's face. Superb finish. That means a lot to you. Uh, I fly in the sky, no. Oh. Unbelievable. I know. Can't believe. Oh. Easy lifter. It's breathing it around. Oh, I think 
about my family, about my kids, about my parents, and I did it. The big two, the last two competitors in this final, Zidrina Savikas. He's only three points behind the man next to him. He's got a chance of lifting the title. But if Marius Pujanowski can lift five stones, the title will go to Poland for the first time in World's Strongest Man history. He's got the physique, he's got the strength, has he got the determination and the will to go all the way? It's all come down to this. Well, it's been neck and neck between these two throughout this final. And first blood goes to the pole. Pujanowski's on his way. Savikas a little bit behind. But what a performance by both men over the last few days. Three victories already to Marius in this final. And that is some effort. Savikas number two, already the pole on number three. The Scandinavian stronghold of winners in World's Strongest Man is going to be beaten. But will it be this fella from Lithuania or will it be Poland? It looks as though it's Poland at the moment. If he gets this up, 160 kilos, it must feel about two tons at the moment. If he gets it up, he will be the champion. Slowly, slowly. Can he do it? Can he become World's Strongest Man? Yes! He can! Fantastic stuff! There is a new champion of the world. Marius Pujanowski brings home Poland's first ever title. What a performer, what a man. Savikas, a bit of an anti-climax for him, but in the end, there was only one champion right from the start. His name, Marius Pujanowski. You are the world's strongest man. Yes. I'm very happy. It feels very good in your heart, yes? Four months is very strong training. Is, yes, first place, I'm very good, happy. I'm happy, second place is good for me. Only one year after injury and second place in the world. Happy. Raymond Spokmanis was happy too. He won the last two events to earn himself a podium finish. And Johnny Perry, by coming second in the Atlas Stones, came fourth. It's a long time since an American's done that well. But it's the pole who's taken the strongman world by storm. I don't know what to think. I did not expect this, although I worked hard for it. I am the world's strongest man. I cannot believe this. I have won. I am so happy and happy also for my family. So in third place in this year's competition, Raymond Bergmanis from Latvia, three times an Olympian, but this the proudest moment of his sporting career. In second place from Lithuania, a young man, Zdrunas Zavikas, who surely has many years at the top ahead of him, but standing in his way and everybody else's for who knows how long, Marius Pujanowski. An extraordinary, prodigious talent lifting the Metrex trophy for the world's strongest man. Most remarkably of all, not a single Scandinavian on the podium. Pujanowski is the first Pole to win the title, the first man from outside the strongman stronghold to be champion in 10 years. And he's a man who fought back from the depths of despair to stand like a colossus at the pinnacle of his chosen sport. We'll see you next year. Taking you on a prehistoric safari, a walking with dinosaurs special gets you closer than ever before, next on BBC One. Sadly, since the recording of that programme, Johnny Perry has died at the age of 29. All those involved with World's Strongest Man send their condolences to his family and friends.